was, all right, you're a comedian. Tell me one joke. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dan Dunn's coming in around tomatoes. Lots of stuff to get to. I uh, have some thoughts about things. Uh, one is, uh, Max Patton, prep you for this one, but somebody tweeted me a story that said... I'll paraphrase, but uh, I think between 2015 and 2018, San Francisco had to replace a whole bunch of light poles that were, one of them fell over and hit a car or something. Um, They had to replace them because um, urine was eating away at the metal at the base. The acid and the urine. I heard this. Combination of dogs and people. I heard this story, yeah. And uh, I thought. The urine was sterile. Well, Acidic. Listen, I learned I learned my lesson over at John Tyler's house uh, a long time ago, which is um, he had a little bedroom and there was no bathroom in it. The idea of bathrooms and bedrooms oh. was kind of a novel, of the a Richard novel Famous. idea. Sure. Um, me, nah, my dad's master suite it was just a box. <laughs> Your was, dad's you know, master suite, eight by eight box. But no, no one, no one had a bathroom in the bedroom. Right. Unless it was the only bathroom. Right. Oh, yeah. My my grandparents had a bathroom in the bedroom, but it was the only bathroom in right. the house. But uh, he said we used to take leaks outside his door, a little back door that just went out in the backyard, mm-hmm. and there, there's a little shrub there. I noticed after about a year that the urine had carved out a half circle in the shrub. Like it mm-hmm. just literally carved it out like an ice cream scooper where we'd just been pissing yeah. for the last year. So um, it struck me, you know, urine can mm. uh, can take its toll. Now, I don't, I didn't read the story. I didn't know much about it, but I, I sort of thought to myself, if, um, if poles need to be replaced because too many mm. people are urinating on the base of them, it's sort of like my barbed wire on the freeway sign. Yeah, it, it's got check city wise. It's oh, time yeah. to stop and go, well, we can replace the poles and we can put up the barbed wire, but what does this say? Let's go. Let's go to the root here. Yeah. What's what's going on? Yeah. What's really happening here? And maybe we can uh, address it at that level. We've discussed the joys of urinating on your property, most mostly backyard, but occasionally front yard. You got to spread it around, man. You got to spread it around, or else yeah, you get gotta, those dry you gotta, patches. You got a half moon in the in the shrubbery. It's also weird that. Uh, Crazy people who are junkies still pee somewhere other than just wide open spaces. You know what I mean? Like a a pole, a lamp yeah. pole. Yeah. Why a pole? Pr- it's probably six inches right. wide. Yeah. How much protection does that really yep. offer? And how discreet are you at this stage in your life? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're sleeping on the street. You're eating out of a dumpster. You're shitting on a sidewalk. The world's like, your oyster. Really? Is this your? Uh, you have delicate sensibilities, uh, <laughs> Daddy? Why is that guy talking to that pole? Oh, no, he's pissing on it. So, oh, okay. But uh, still, it uh, evidently uh, the excess amount of urine has taken the pole out. Now, look, some of it can be from dogs. Sure. There's no uh, no doubt about it. But that doesn't really. It seems like they would need to be replaced earlier. The human factor definitely has got to be factored in. You would in. imagine many, most ma- major cities have dogs that pee on poles, right. not replacing them on the reg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So something, oh, there's another yes. factor there. This might be an unpopular opinion, but if we electrified the poles, then that would get people to stop immediately. Some Jurassic Park. Well, yeah. if, if the electric electricity carried up the stream like it That's does in hoping. movies yeah. where people pee into fountains <laughs> and then lightning hits That's and then they, 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 switch body. Cl- right. they switch body. Right. Uh, the other thing I was uh, thinking about, unpopular, like Gina just said, but oh, um, I was sitting around over the weekend, I was thinking uh, a lot of Asian bashing going on. And uh, then I thought to myself, you know, when I was a kid, we're all up into Kung Fu. Like mm-hmm. the TV sure. show was Kung Fu and uh, everyone was a karate yep. expert and a black belt. All Valley. You didn't mess with Asians. Yeah. Because oh, the yeah. stereotype is they all were black belts in karate. <laughs> That's right. They rip off a move. And, <laughs> and the Asians have tamped that down. Yeah. They've went, hey, what's with the stereotype? We're not all into breaking blocks of ice with our forehead. <laughs> Most of us don't have those kind of skills. Hurry up. And yeah. people are like, noted. Yeah. yeah. I think they should have kept that one going. That's true. Bad marketing. I'm saying, like, look, if you're black and uh, the stereotype is big uh. dick, 
or big vertical Run leap. You don't or go out of your way Asian to dissuade your people. your black belt. Uh, let the other people on the subway mm. assume yeah. your third degree. Sure. Yeah. Taekwondo. Smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, not everything needs to be squashed. Totally. We've all seen the, the, the security videos of them attacking, you know, gangs of youths attacking, you know, elderly Asians on the street. You know, it's a horrible thing. Mr. Miyagi wouldn't have put up with that. Oh, no. my God. Then he would have honked their nose at the end. When I was, uh, when I was like in junior high, like if there was the <laughs> Asian kid around. No, you don't mess with him. We thought there's a pretty good chance he had some <laughs> skills. You didn't mess with him. He was a little undersized, yeah. but you still didn't mess with him because I'd been watching Kung Fu. Right. And I'd learned some valuable lessons. Yeah. Well, how old were you when Karate Kid came out? I was actually training. I don't know. Chris can look it up, but there was a place was called uh, the Jet Center, which was um, Benny the Jet or Kida's. It's kind of funny. It was this, John. Yeah, it was this unbeaten uh, kickboxing champion who was a, a, a it was a legend had it that he had like death matches and you know Thailand and stuff like that. Sure. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> Blood sport. It was. It was. It was. There were some crazy stories about uh, him going abroad and and taking money and wow. having these crazy death matches and stuff. But anyway, he was uh, the unbeaten champion. And I was training there doing kickboxing. I was 19 or 20, something like that. And uh, it was, it was uh, they were training some kid, I think Machio, mm. for uh, a movie called The Karate Kid, which uh, out of context is it's just a stupid name. Yeah. Not yeah. great. It doesn't, it's not doesn't great. sound good at no. all. It's just sort of alliteration. But um, that... That's probably so. Probably would have been, I don't know, the time. I don't know. 84. One, 84? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's it. They can look I was, it up. I was, I, was 20, sure it's 84. I was 20 and 84. Yeah, see if he trained at the Jet Center in Van Nuys. I think he. Yeah, I, I, we, think, I think he we, did. Yeah, we have like a video. Oh, oh. sweet. We have a video? Well, it says it's his first. World famous Jets. Oh, that's Blinky. I'm looking at He's a guy right back. now. His name is Blinky Arquitas. He married Benny's uh, sister. Smart. Getting I good think with gonna go to the death. I fighter. think <laughs> we throw fight shows here. We have our, our membership uh, instructional That's the Jet Center here. in Van Nuys. We've shot numerous movies in this room here. We've done Mike Hammer, just to name a few. Hunter, Murder She Wrote, oh. Scarecrow and Mrs. Murder King, Jake and the Fat Man. We've just done oh, so many different favorites. things. Your kid gloves with Gene Hackman. We've done the Diet Coke commercial with Sugar Ray Leonard. On and on and on and on. I couldn't really name them all. But we've done a lot of stuff. So the Jet Center in reality has become a, a very famous for locations because it's a, a clean gym and the atmosphere is right. So people from Hollywood are out here all the time, you know, uh, asking us to be able to. So that guy's name is Blinky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. And then Blinky um, uh, was one of the trainers there. His wife fought. Name was Lily. I think Lily passed. I don't know if Blinky's uh, still around. Yeah, Blinky I, was his brother-in-law. I would mess with Lily and Blinky, not having known their background. Mm -hmm. Those yeah, names kind Lily of invited. Lily was by far the toughest uh, coach of all out there. Wow. She passed, but she was a champion. I think he was a champion. Benny the Jet Arquitas was this, you know, big champion guy who did all those, uh, again, death matches and stuff, although no one really... No one actually knew, and I I remember them going. This guy, I don't, I don't even know who I knew who Ralph Macchio was. I don't know what do we know. Uh, Happy Days no, or something. Um, uh, not the Lost Boys. Oh, outsiders. Thank you. But outsider. I mean, that was a small role. You wouldn't know, like, oh, Ralph Macchio of the uh, right. Yeah, they're was making uh, the Karate role? Kid. Yeah, that's all. That's wow. all I got for you. But that's more than most. It is. Uh, that's true. Uh, so yeah, Jet Center, Van Nuys, old brick building, and then I think. The earthquake hit and like knocked half of it down in like uh, 1994 because uh, can't have old brick buildings. Speaking of thinking every Asian uh, knows karate, uh, when the Karate Kid came out, when I first saw it, I was six. And of course, you know, I'm very impressionable at that point. I wanted to learn karate, you know, like every fucking tool that saw the movie. And my dad, you know, was like, all right, I'll take you down to the local, you know, class or whatever you could watch and see if it's for you. And I watched and I met the instructor and I was like, eh, maybe. And then who should show up? The one Asian kid in my class. <laughs> mm. There, he was there with his belt. He, he, yeah. was, he was in the class. Already had the belt. He already had the belt. It was a black belt, of course, but you know, he was he was a student. 
I'm just saying, Asians, let's not tamp down everything. Yeah. And by the way, you got uh, great at math. Yeah. This you is got it's all mostly you got, violin. Violin, classically trained. You got hands registered as weapons. That's a lot of range. Yeah. You're you're doing lean well. into it. If man. you're spinning the wheel of stereotypes, <laughs> uh, that's, that's what you want to land on. Yeah, I think all you got is slow driver, really. That's the yeah. one. But but what I'm saying is, is yeah. whatever culture you are, uh, you know, black folk, you got uh, you got the vertical, you got the wide hog, and then you got a little bit tardy. Mm. Focus on tamping down the bad. Mm. That's all, just like you would individually. That's a good you know point. I mean? Lean into the good stuff, tamp down the bad. Don't throw them all out. Right. All right. Is that why Jews have gotten less funny? Mm. They didn't want to be known for it. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, Jews got a little. Oh. They've gotten a little more serious. You're sleeping over on the, the job. Yeah. Follow up yeah. question. Serious follow up question. Are, has there ever been an Asian race, race car driver like F1 J- or Jap- NASCAR? Japanese guy just won the Indy 500. All no, right. Uh, Letterman Ray Hall. It's a yes or no question. Please <laughs> answer the question. I was it the year before last, Max Zapata, or was it last year? I think it was the year before last. Wow. The year before last or last year, I, I can't uh, I can't recall. Yeah, he was then Tiger Woods goes and ruins it. He was up there with the <laughs> Letterman Asian. and that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Rolled he won that in fucking car. Takuma Sato. That's an Asian person. <laughs> yeah, I guess Japanese, like born in Japan, kind of wow. kind of guy. Won the uh, yeah. Why not? All right. Uh, all right. Uh, we were talking about. Uh, I think we were last talking about the Jesse Smollett thing, and uh, Brian was saying we we're all kind of on to it early, like we thought. Um, that was my vague recollection. Mm, I, yeah, I, I could be proven wrong. Well, I think the posture for these things is you first kind of look at the whole thing from a you know thousand feet. Mm-hmm. You go, look, what's up? And you go, okay, this is what happened to the guy. And you go, okay. You go like eh, he was at the apartment and the noose was still around his neck. It would just seem it's like weird. A, it was weird to go through the lobby, get in the elevator. Yeah. But you go oh, maybe, maybe he was in, in shock. We do too much in shock stuff, though. I think <laughs> right. we. I think it kind of reminded me of like when I was a kid, all the '70s TV shows, like the cop shows. Was so, people were trying to run people over all the time. Like the the preferred <laughs> method of death was a, a Plymouth. Like, like uh, that's how, that was the weapon. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't assassinate people. Right. You wouldn't shoot them. You wouldn't stab them. It's like, Too messy. There would always be the scene of the of the woman, and she'd be she'd be down at her. By, by the way, nothing good ever happened in a subterranean parking oh, garage sure. after dark. Sure. That's the number one thing where all the shit went down. It's always a woman walking alone, trying to get her keys in her mm-hmm. car. Fumbling all of a sudden, keys. there's no security. There's never anyone no. else around. Dimly lit. It's always full of cars, but there's nobody else around. And by the way, I was watching, because I was watching Charlie's Angels sure. uh, last night. We invented the... <sighs> subterranean parking structure like the multi-level mm-hmm. subterranean parking and structure structure 21 years before we invented the catalytic converter so there's <laughs> just open exhaust sure. like yeah. pouring out yeah. like That's guys guys driving a huge plymouth satellite from mm-hmm. 1966 your eyes are watering because yep. the thing's running too yeah. rich and God you can just taste the gasoline yep. in the air like just we, walking down there we invent we invented this thing, yeah. but we never had ventilation, and the cars were just wide open. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have any, you know, most of the cars, you know, when these things were built in 1969, 1972, the cars that were parking in them were from the 50s yeah. and the 60s. There was nothing. I mean, people don't realize what it was like to stand behind one of these big land yachts when someone fired them up and the plume that would come out. I was always just like, holy shit. I don't know why we didn't figure out the ventilation part, but so speaking of- um, Air wasn't bad for you back then. Seizing up. So it would always be some woman and she'd be down there and she'd be like, oh, I I forgot something. And she'd be walking back to the uh, elevator and then oh. some bad guy would come barreling around the corner and then she would be in front of the car and she would freeze. She would always just be like, oh, ah! and then they'd show the headlights real close oh, and then they'd get run over. Now, the only way she could be saved <laughs> is if Starsky and or Hutch dove on her, knocked right. her out of the right. way at the last second. Yeah. But they were just sitting there. Right. So we always had this thing where it's like, well, she just froze. Whether it's the noose around the neck or the headlights coming to you, I don't feel like I would freeze. No, I, feel no, like I don't feel like you would freeze either. Uh, we could do an experiment, but everyone go stand out in the street. <laughs> and and just, then yeah, close your eyes. Let's have a van barrel at you and see if you just 
Stat, go full ice sculpture. Because I feel like I would be very compelled to move. And I feel like if somebody put something around my neck, yeah. noose or not, Tie. just just whatever, mm-hmm. I would notice it pretty quickly. You and I would, it off. I would yeah. assume it was like soaked in urine or bleach or right. whatever they dumped on yeah. me. Like it'd be a thing where like, what does this thing have on it? I don't even know what it is. Yeah. But uh, but here's my point. You uh, you hear your stories. I got to get back to Charlie's Angels in a minute. But you hear these stories and you kind of go, hmm, MAGA hats, Chicago, two in the morning. It was all news. too like much. It all, it all seemed too much, right? But you don't want to be the guy that goes, this never happened. You just have to go, hmm. I'm going to I'm going to sit back yeah. for a couple of days before I comment because I don't want these comments to come back and bite me in the ass. And everyone is pissed off at uh, Jesse Smollett because they're like the guy was a sen- like we have enough troubles in this country vis-a-vis race. Mm-hmm. Now he's stoking the fire yeah. like well, now we need well, more we're going to have we're going to have more and I was Thinking about him, like individually, like look at him, he's cashing in. He's going to get people killed. There's going to the cops are going to get shot, or some guy wearing a MAGA hat's going to get punched in the head, or something. Like it's you're stoking this, but then I realized it's not. I mean, he is doing it, but how about everyone who just picks it up and runs with it without tapping the brake, like sitting back, like laying back? And I realized we're in this shit. The the reason everyone is we're getting a lot wrong in this particular window in history is you don't need to come you don't need to weigh in on everything mm. shit, especially right away sh- shit could happen uh-huh. could be you know d- it could be diverse it could be uh jesse smollett could be kyle rittenhouse okay sit back for a second mm. collect a few facts then weigh in or not at all or don't like yeah we got well that's sh- preposterous well so we're worried about like oh so jesse is um sowing this unrest. What about all the celebrities and all the politicians, all the news outlets who grab it and run with it? Because it's easy. It's so easy. I know. All right. We have, uh, I have some tweets from uh, moments after the small oh, thing came about. Mm-hmm. Let's do, uh, we got Rob Reiner. We got Cher. We got Alyssa Milano. What? But I'm just saying, you know, Alyssa Milano, Cher, Rob Reiner, we, you don't have to weigh in on, on everything. Yeah. This one really happened in Chicago. It didn't happen in Malibu. I don't just and was. also, this notion that every, every, you know, everyone from, you know, Oprah to, uh, you, you know, Kamala, Kamala Harris, Harris. Like, just he's a close, dear friend. Is right. he really? Mm-hmm. Are you guys that close? Like, how does everyone know each other? How does everyone so dear? He yeah. was on a show for three years. That I promise you never watched or heard of. I didn't hear of him until the story broke. No. All right. Well, this do we'll do Rob. We'll do Cher first. His I think hers was uh was was pretty spectacular. But we'll uh we'll see. Do you have that? All right, Dawson. Yeah, I'm scrolling back to it on the page. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. You can go in whatever order. Here's Cher. Mm-hmm. Jesse Smollett. Empire actor reportedly attacked in possible hate crime, villainy, racism, homophobia, promoted by most infamous clowns in the world is the poison that kills. White only is not right. America is people of color. GOP goes down with the ship. That's does, very does she, coded. Does yeah. she think she's, she still thinks she's Indian or is she? <laughs> Tramps and thieves. <laughs> Uh, you got, uh, you got Rob Reiner. I haven't even heard Rob. I'll find it. All good right. For the, oh, good you... for these people for not deleting these tweets. <laughs> yeah, I think, um. Although maybe someone collected them. Yeah. Back the no, somebody deleted. I, I think maybe, maybe Maxine Waters got rid of hers. Uh, you can go, uh, let's hear some, let's hear some AOC. Oh, did she weigh in? <laughs> I'm just saying, step back, and also it makes you look dumb for the next one because you got this one wrong. Maybe, mm. maybe the next one's wrong, but also, again, not everything is. You don't have to throw yourself into the fray of everything. Mm-hmm. It's just something that happened. Let's see if we can get the some more um, details. Go ahead, Here, here's AOC. There is no such thing as racially charged. This attack was not possibly homophobic. Oh, this was. Um, what? <laughs> Here's what happened. There was an article 
I don't know, New York Times or something. And they attempted to go a possible hate crime or, you know, right, they, they were trying to go, hey, we're reporters. Right. So let's just wait and see. We're not exactly sure about all the details yet. And AOC was pissed that the reporter. Oh, boy. Showed a little uh, hesitance, a, restraint, to, right, to, right. a little restraint to not dive sure. right in. Right. But uh, but AOC was going to do it for him. There is no such thing as racially charged. The attack was not possibly homophobic. Mm. It was a racist and homophobic attack. How is it? First off, how is it homophobic that we don't know that the person is Okay, he wasn't blowing a dude at the time, was he? Like, what? We don't know. These guys just stumbled up upon a, a black man, yeah. but they didn't. You don't. There's no gay hat you're wearing. I mean, there are gay hats. Don't was get he me wrong. Beret? I'm just saying. Like, how do you know he's even gay? AOC. But all right, sorry. Go ahead, Dawson. It was a racist and homophobic attack. If you don't like what is happening to our country, then work to change it. It is no one's job to water down. Or sugarcoat the rise of hate crimes. All right. Okay. Well, delete it because it didn't happen. Or or, or enter a retraction. Yeah. yeah. So you know what? Jump to the Yeah, follow up. Everyone follow Kids, up. Pay well, attention. that's the thing. So you can be early money on a lot of stuff, but if your horse if your horse doesn't come in, you got to pay up. Yeah, right, right, that's, right. That's the whole thing. And and don't you think in a weird way, Jesse Smollett has now united the country because everybody fucking hates him. Yes. I, I hate you for making me feel, you know, like I was, uh, like you said, backing the wrong horse. And I hate you for causing this, you know, divisiveness. So in an ironic way, he's helped you. Brian's grandma says divisive, but, know, right. yeah. but continue. Yeah. You got Alyssa, you got Rob Reiner. There's Rob Reiner. Openly. All right. Homophobia existed before Trump, but there is no question that since he has injected his hatred into the American bloodstream, we are less decent, less human, less loving. Gotta be, uh, I miss uh, miss the teen steam. Gotta let it out. All right, we'll do uh, one more. Who do you like? You like- Alyssa uh, Milano is kind of good. This was- uh, Wait, we just did that That was Rob Reiner. No, that was Rob Reiner. Oh, I'm sorry, Alyssa Milano. This is just after people started questioning it. Alyssa said, if a man staged his own attack, he is wrong in so many ways. No one could be that hurtful to stage this, right? To fuck with all of us by playing into our weaknesses and make it even harder for victims to come forward. No one could choose to be that hurtful, right? That's a good tweet. That's a really good tweet. That I think that stands you know, she's she. That's what she's saying. Like, what kind of fucking monster would do this? And yes. now we have an answer. Uh, yeah, Pelosi deleted her, so she was Shocking. smart. Oh, I'm. She or, deleted hers a month in. She. Oh she, wow. Yeah, she was. The, she got some intel, inside intel. <laughs> you got uh, Kamala to end on a high note, and then I'll uh, we'll roll into our next bit here. Kamala said, "Jesse Smollett is one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know." I'm praying for his quick recovery. This was an attempted modern day lynching. No one should have to fear for their life because of their sexuality or color of their skin. We must confront this hate. If I'm to put my Adam Carolla hat on for a moment, I really don't want somebody basically running the free world who sent that tweet. Well, I I think. You'd like them to collect data and information and then decide That's, on a on a course of action. Not in general, but about this specific situation. <laughs> yeah. But um again, I don't I know he is gay. I still question how anyone knew that was part of the right. gay bashing. I mean, it's sort of like saying you rear-ended someone on the freeway and fucked their neck up, mm-hmm. and then we found out later the guy was gay, but that doesn't mean you rammed the car because it was gay. Well, stop saying rear-ended. <laughs> That's right. All, all of this would suggest it was part of an uh, elaborate hit, you know right. what I mean, where they staked the guy out for right. quite some time. They profiled. Yeah. And also, um, look, maybe a little out of my demographic, but I don't feel like the guy was a household name or anything. I never I heard never of him never heard his this. name yeah. come up, and it's not like... It's not like there's not tons of black performers mm-hmm. we're all aware of. He right. just wasn't. Yeah, they're probably half the other cast members I had heard of. And I just hadn't heard of him. How is he everyone's dear, dear friend and a gentle soul? That's a great question because I isn't that part of 
his motivation for doing this? Like, I want my name out there. I guess. I I feel like he gilded the lily a little bit. I feel like one guy jumping him, you know, the MAGA hat was a little, little much. The noose was kind mm-hmm. of a little, like, just get one fat white guy <laughs> to push you and, yeah. like, knock yeah. you down. Throw and, you a couple of blows. And, and say, say he used yeah. the, dropped a few N-bombs yeah. and said something about Trump and then yeah. move on. Leave the, it alone. The, the two guys, first off, if, if you're going to stage a hate crime and you're black, mm-hmm. don't get two guys who are blacker than you. The more you know. <laughs> it, 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 it fucks your shit up a little bit. Yeah, it really derails Find the Find a nice ginger. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Like, it just, just, just to help. It'll, it'll, it'll help things a little bit. There's yeah. surveillance cameras Ooh. and ring doorbells everywhere. Like, people are going to see people getting out of Ubers at two in the morning mm-hmm. and, and stuff. Just get... Let's get one guy. You really want to drive it home? Hire the ginger to like control the two brothers. I mean, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The two uh, bite lifters. Like, you two, do my bidding. Attack. Yeah, but now we have to peel the onion a I lot. Know. I'm, you know? so, well, yeah, I'm saying. I'm just saying. If you're committed to this, this guy, so easy. find a heavy set white yeah. guy, have him one on one, knock you down, do all that stuff. <laughs> I, I, Jesse is uh, fairly light skinned. The brothers are the. Blackest human beings I've ever, I've ever seen in my life. So mm-hmm. again, find a couple of white guys and do it that way. How indignant is Mark Garagos today? Well, Mark got that we got it wrong. The last podcast I did with Mark, he got shit face. So it was <laughs> oh boy, it was hard to understand. Don Julio. Yeah, he was in New York. I don't know what he was celebrating. <laughs> You know, with the time difference, it was almost 3 p.m. Right. Yeah, you know, where he time. Was, cocktail time. And it was a Friday. Yeah. Time. Uh, so <laughs> he had a lot to say about a lot, a lot of stuff. So I was that having, is a must I, listen. I was having uh, trouble unpacking it. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you about uh, Tommy John. You know, I spoke to him since. I didn't rub it in his face. I've been on the losing end of that. Yeah. Hey, crimes. You get, you get drunk. You're, oh, you're yeah. aware of it. Yes, yes, yes. I don't need the person, yeah. you know, you see it the see uh, the day after the party. Like, oh, man, oh, you were drunk. I'm surprised to see you on your feet today. Yeah, I was there. I, hate I was to, drinking. I got it. I hate to shit on this point, mm. but did we not do a full episode one time of how shit-faced he got on stage with us? Well, he awesome, did. Awesome, I that That's for entertainment purposes. It was. Oh, one off, off the air. Oh, I see. Off the air. I didn't, you I leave didn't it say alone. anything to him. He did, he did boot in the green room. Covered in pretzels. He did go, you know what I like? I like the uh, drunken, carb-friendly ordering. Because here's how the drunken, carb-friendly ordering goes. This is only when you're drunk. Now, when you're sober, you can order the sliders Mm -hmm. with the bagel bread. And then you can take the patty out Mm -hmm. with the onion slice Mm -hmm. on it and eat it. Mm -hmm. When you're drunk, you do the exact same thing. After you eat the patty... You then one by one yeah, eat dessert. eat the bagel bread. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's how it works. It cannot, right. it cannot be there. Right, the pretzel you, bread. Yeah, the pretzel bread. Like you literally, what, what, which it was actually Mark started by peeling just the brown part off with his fingernail, sure, but yeah, eventually you get to the yeah. pulp. Like Somehow you will more get or less to carbs. it. <laughs> you need. I mean, let let let's face it. If you're gonna, if you're a man of means like like Mark is, and you're going low carb, you need a low carb valet. Oh, for sure. You need a dude just standing there by the door, like a carb coach. I will, I will get you. Like I said, there's no such thing as ordering a, a burger with no fries, right? In the green room of a club, they, they you can tell them all you want. The fries are showing up. Yeah, and you do dutifully eat the patty mm-hmm. first with the lettuce wrap or whatever, and then you sit there and sure. stare at the fries. Yeah, you're only human. And then at some point, have one. That's where the valet. Yeah. Intercepts. That's where that guy comes in. Yeah, that you li- literally just jumps in between you and the carbs once you've done the. the he's protein. your sober buddy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's your sober buddy. All right, yeah, Do- Doctor Drew would be good for that. <laughs> Let me tell you about Tommy John. Wish your friends and family a merry softness and a happy new rear with new comfy underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Tommy John's loungewear, luxurious, soft, tri tri blend, and micro. Oh, God, let's see. Oh, microbial. That's what I said. They broke it into two pieces, and that's what screwed me up. Fabrics mean four-way stretch and no lint balls or fuzz. Over 17 million pairs sold, given the gift of Tommy John, has uh, become a uh, holiday 
tradition for families across the country. I wear my Tommy John's every day. I'm wearing the T-shirt and the underwear right now. The loungewear, so comfortable, especially when it gets cold outside. Returns and exchanges are free, all backed by the best pair you'll ever wear. It's free, guarantee. It's Tommy John, right, Dawson? Get $25 off site-wide, plus free shipping right now at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. That's TommyJohn.com slash Adam for $25 off site-wide, plus free shipping. Order now so your gifts arrive before the holidays. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. All right, we got the Rotten Tomatoes game. We got a couple other things to talk about. We'll do all that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, man, this is Barry in Iowa. Last week marked five years. No soap, no shampoo. Still going strong. You're my hero. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, send me see ya. We'll bump knees. <laughs> um, so I was watching Charlie's Angels last night. And uh, you guys are too young to remember this. Show. Mm-hmm. The TV show, right? Not the movie. Got to make a distinction. Mm-hmm. You're right. Uh, very 70s, early 80s. Um, apartments were cool. Mm-hmm. Everybody, um, this was, um, the girls all lived in their own cool apartments. I, I was thinking about it. it. Apartment didn't have the stigma that it has now or the whatever that it has now. It was modern and it was kind of cool. Like sunken living room cool? Yeah, like I was thinking about, look, when you're making a, a TV show, you have to kind of decide where the person lives. Mm-hmm. And like you take um, you take Chips, you had Ponch and John. They're both like cool bachelor mm-hmm. motorcycle cops. They both lived in apartments, which you, you might be, I don't know, you might not do that now. Like you watch mm-hmm. these TV right. shows, they have a home. You watch all the sitcoms, right. you know. Now they have the apartment if the theme is poor. But if the theme the theme wasn't oh. poor, the theme was cool. Yeah, like you nice know what condo. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Bachelor apartments. Yeah, right. bachelor bad. So uh, there and I know that they do a lot of exterior shots of these big, oh. you know, stucco apartment yeah. buildings. And they're all kind of they're all kind of uh Dressed, the apartment was decorated kind of cool and gallish and kind of 70s and, and blah, blah, blah. But it was it was considered cool to be in an apartment. And then they do a thing where it's like the last night they had to go in to cover stewardesses. You know, they always have a job. They have sure. a mission. Mm-hmm. And they and and all the steward when they go, of course, someone's trying to kill one of the stewardess and they go to they go to her apartment. She had a cool apartment. Like everyone had an apartment and it was celebrated. Right. It really, I, I don't know, something happened with home ownership or something, or maybe the realities of, of apartments kind of set in, but there was a, Rhoda had a kind of cool yeah. apartment. Mary Tyler Moore. Laverne and Shirley. Had a cool apartment. Well, they had, there was, was a little, there's a little novelty there, but single, yeah. successful people oh. lived in kind of cool apartments. Did home mean like, home ownership mean kind of square and settled down? I think it meant Leave like it a be dog and some kids yeah. and a picket fence and it, it meant something different. Yeah. The, the houses, by the way, there was no cool modern houses. Oh. There was just kind of houses from the 50s right. that felt very family yeah. and kind of Archie bunker right. versus right. Cool single guy or single gal to contrast against the out of touch, uh, uh, you know, old guy Archie Bunker yeah. or, the, or Beaver or whatever. Like, yeah, there's they live in the big city, yeah, and they work for a right. newspaper or whatever it is. They live in a cool apartment. Yeah, they were just apartments. Also, at some point when they're going to try to run you over, you don't have subterranean parking in your home, right. In Van Nuys, oh, you smart. know what I mean. They had to go down. It was always dark. You know, there's going out to the dimly lit yeah true. the the, uh, the thing about the the parking subterranean parking at the apartment was it was always filled with cars but zero activity people, no people. must have been like long term <laughs> storage or something like I, i'm doing the math there's there's 128 cars here surely somebody's yeah. walking out to their car or coming home work. from work yeah. no never never a soul never there was a not another being in there but there was packed all right uh, dr melfi should we play? That's right. Should we play the play Rotten Tomatoes up. game? Are you going to cue us up, Paul? Here 
Back in the summer of 2020, we played a couple of rounds of the Rotten Tomatoes game dedicated to hot movies, you know, like Heat or The Heat or Wet Hot American Summer. Well, now the weather has dropped to a chilly 68 degrees here in Los Angeles, so it's time to zip up the hoodie and brave the elements as we discuss some seriously cold movies. I was in La Quinta hmm. over the weekend. It was in the 30s. Really? Like, like, low, like 40, 41. So, yeah, I guess it dipped probably when I wasn't looking. Do we call that the high desert or just the desert? Does anyone know? Got to figure it out. But mm-hmm. nice. Joshua Tree's the high desert. So, mm-hmm. when I'm there, every desert's the high desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While everyone argues over whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie, <laughs> let's take a look at the sequel, which shifts the action to Washington Dulles International Airport. A brutal snowstorm rages outside while John McClane takes on terrorists who've taken over flight control. Bruce Willis, Bonnie Bedelia, and William Atherton all return for 1990s Die Hard 2, Die Harder. I was really hoping a bunch of cold puns would come up. Um, all right. This is a pretty watchable movie. Very watch, Very silly, <laughs> yeah. but very watchable. I love this movie. Yeah, it's a fun movie. And not, you know, everyone does, oh, it's the big letdown. But eh, not, not really. Just it wasn't, uh, wasn't like Under Siege or, think... or, or, or Speed or something mm. like that, where the next one was just a complete turkey. Right. Oh, speed no, on no. a boat. This is a very, this is a perfectly acceptable sequel. I think Rennie Harlan took over and he has a um, checkered history of some <laughs> absurd action movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bruce, uh, the very definition of charismatic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very watchable. Rugged every man. Mm-hmm. Well, he wasn't the muscle bound, you know, Stallone right. and Schwarzenegger, you know, type. He was the wisecracking New mm-hmm. York cop in LA in the first one. And the premise seems good on this one. I've never seen it, but the you premise never seen seems this? no. Come on. Not, Come on. Sorry. All right. But we look perfectly enjoyable action movie, but the critics gotta, you know. They don't like sequels in general. They usually knock no. it down a couple of pegs just because they went and sort of I, I, it, because look, uh, by process, uh, the sequel's a money grab. Mm-hmm. It just is, and I, I know the critics are into the money grab. It they, makes sense. They actually reward movies that seem like you know, uh, I don't know, Jacques and the Angry Inch or whatever it is. <laughs> Hedwig. <laughs> Hedwig. <laughs> the point is, is. They they will they will it's a movie too. I know. But they will reward a movie if it seems too outlandish yeah. or like like I dare you to watch this movie. You know what I mean? Like you know And by the way, do you know what the angry inch is? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you know why it's called the angry it's his inch? It's a dick, right? Yeah. Well yeah. it's left of his dick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, right, I don't know. I feel like Moonlight got a few of those. Like, we're going to take this guy, he's gay, and we'll just sit on a beach. Sure. And he'll go like, we'll dare you. We dare you to make this film. As opposed to Moonlighting. Right. Yeah. There you go. All right. So for that reason, I think it, it's going to take, take some points. But it was fun. And I'll be, I'll be angry if this thing is rotten because it's, it's an action movie. And it, it checked its boxes and it did its job. But yet, critics can be cruel. I say just rotten at 58. Yeah, this is, of all the action sequels we've been subjected to, which are mostly trash, like you said, this is easily one of the best ones. Uh, That said, I said barely fresh at 62. Ooh, I had 57, and after you guys shat on it a bunch of times, I moved it to 51. Mm. Die Hard 2, Die Harder. It's fresh. Yes. 69. Oh, yeah. And the people have it at 70. It's a fun movie. It's fun. By the way, the high desert sits at an elevation of two to 4,000 feet, includes mostly North San Bernardino County and the other side, uh, Palmdale, Lancaster, that area. So Palm Springs area is just desert. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
After a stuck-up figure skater falls during the 1988 Olympics, she teams up with an arrogant former Olympic hockey player to win the gold mm-hmm. in four more years. As their, I- alert. as their icy rapport begins to thaw, the athletes discover they have some real chemistry, both in and out of the rink. It's good. Moira Kelly I love this movie. and D.B. Sweeney star in 1992's The Cutting Edge. Toe pick. <laughs> I can't mm-hmm. believe you, you. So you've seen I, this movie, I saw right? this when it was on video, like VHS, and I remember nothing about it. They, it's uh, topic. Yeah, they would. There was a lot of taking these two that had nothing in common, yeah. and then putting them together, and you know, a love was love was found. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. By the way, when 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 you take the two people and they're both really good looking, it doesn't take that long. <laughs> The, yeah. the, you know, so there's not this yeah. whole Pizza steeping period, especially if you're a dude and I don't you're know what's gonna take and you're 26. <laughs> yeah, not like oh, she's a smoke show of a blonde ice skater, but she's stuck up. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> Set in her she ways. likes classical music. <laughs> <laughs> no, we national athlete is super accomplished. <laughs> yeah, we fit. Both sides are pretty on that. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, but somehow it always starts. It, it, they always get off on the wrong foot. Of course. That's that's the problem. Yeah. He accidentally insults her somehow. Yeah. They find their way back together uh, they, for 90 they, minutes. The shopping carts smash yeah. into Excuse each other. You. And I, hey, watch where you're going. You again. Yeah. <laughs> it was that. And then later on. But when you're good looking, when both parts are good looking. Yeah. You cut a few corners. That's right. Sheena, so, you, know, you might be the only one who's actually seen this and remembers it. <laughs> I mean, I... I saw it when it came out mm. and I, I remember it fondly but that's going to screw me up here mm. I, I have no read on it I have no that's read on it they, can, they can't they can't like it can't be great not to be confused with ice castles was there a lot of ice skating movies I in, think so okay the yeah. first gift I ever got Teresa Strasser for maybe your wedding was the LP vinyl of the ice castle soundtrack oh my god Bring I wonder um then it was also a lot of that if the stars couldn't really skate that mm-hmm. well, a lot of tight shots yeah, on their oh, yeah. feet and then back up to their face right. and then back to the feet again. All right. They could not. Uh... Boy, I have no idea. And what became of her? And maybe she was a skater. That's why we hadn't heard oh, of her. Interesting. All right. Um, oh, my God. They didn't like it at... 39. Ooh. I hedged my bets, which always goes well. 55. 50. The cutting edge is rotten at 57. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Look at that. People at 76. Max Pata has the original two minute audio clip on our take on Jesse Smollett, Ooh. January. Oh, no. January 2019. So I brought well. it up, so it has to go. It has to go again. No, I, I remember being like wildly like shocked by sure. this. So let's see. My feeling was I didn't believe it fully, but I didn't want to be the person sure. who just went bullshit, bullshit <laughs> because I wanted to yeah. wait yeah. and hear Smart. what was going on. All yeah, right, th- and this is uh, AJ Benza in studios. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, no. He will be an early. Uh, here oh, we yeah. go. Yep. Smollett was taken to the hospital, treated for a fractured rib. He was discharged uh, Tuesday morning. Chicago police are investigating the attack. They're treating it as a possible hate crime. How do you but know who more. he is? Like Empire. You, well, he's, he's, I know, but you have to like follow him or that's something? That's what I'm saying. Like, are these guys just the luckiest well, racist on earth? Like, hold on. That's a lot of I like to think of myself <laughs> as the luckiest <laughs> racist on earth. <laughs> Two beautiful white children, <laughs> beautiful white neighbors. <laughs> living. Here. Wife drives a beautiful Lucky white son of uh, bitch yeah, Tesla. Wow. You know what I mean? I like yeah. My head just with the scissors. Guys got it all. Here's what I'm going to say up front right away. I hate to even say this because it's it's. I hate that I have this this feeling, but I don't think it's real. I think it's set up. I think that's bullshit. I think the fact that they had bleach on them in Chicago, hoping that some black guy would walk in, they do this and have a rope. There's something about this that stinks. It's too. Perfect. Now, AJ, I, I will I will speak to that saying when I read this headline and I was reading, I was like, this just doesn't add up. Ooh. We're going to find out tomorrow something. Something is off so, on this. It's so bizarre and it's so horrific. I thought the same thing. What are we going to find out that hopefully contradicts this because it's horrific? Yeah. So here's my take. Okay. I could never say something is a hoax because 
It's horrific, and it yeah. may it is. may definitely be true. Ooh. I'll say that we've had a lot of hoaxes, and the problem with a lot of hoaxes is it brings into question when real things happen. Right. You go, oh, right. now is this exactly. real? Is right. this cooked exactly. up again? Is this more than And Jr.? so you created a uh, – with the swastika <clears throat> in the bathroom at the airport written, written right. backwards. Right. So we've had a lot of that. So now we all have to go, hmm, which not sucks. sure, which sucks. Which sucks. sucks for this poor guy, but too. if you think about it statistically – we live in a world where it's like, oh, it's so racist. We're homophobic. We're racist. We're homophobic. And then the big stories come out, and then we get a little peek behind the curtain. It turns out there was a lot more going on, and it wasn't what it just go was back presented the, at. Yeah. But there's got to be some, yeah, and maybe course. this is it. Just go back to the march with the Indian and the Covington High School kids and the whole thing. It was filmed from a certain angle, blah, blah, blah. There's too much... There's too much of this story that's perfect. That's the perfect racist thing. The bleach, the rope. The, I don't buy all of it. And because we just went through this other bullshit story, I need time. Mm-hmm. I need time. AJ needs AJ time. AJ needs time. <laughs> well, well, well I guess we're on it. We're also – we're living in a weird period of time where there is such a thing, a real category of race hoaxes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just don't yeah. feel like that existed formally. Like, you know – Poland, 1943, and things like that. Like, I just, we're living in a race hoax world. First world problems, I would argue. Which would also make you think the race issue has been solved if we've moved on to hoaxes. (laughs) Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, the the boring low-grade stuff is probably still around, but the sensational fun, sink your teeth into it, that, that stuff's slowing up. All right, where are we? Sorry, Dawson. Our next movie is set in post-apocalyptic ice age where all of humanity's last survivors live aboard a gigantic globe-spanning yeah, super yeah. train. Yeah. I like this love movie. this movie. The movie follows Chris Evans as he fights his way through car after car of divided social classes in an attempt to spark a revolution. Co-starring Tilda Swinton, directed by recent Oscar winner Bong Joon-ho. Mm-hmm. Right. From 2012, Snowpiercer. I... I'm not saying I'm not saying that this is 100 percent fresh. I'm saying that not a day and I'm serious. Not a day goes by where I don't think about this movie. I think about it almost every day. Sad. (laughs) This movie is your mother now. Get your shit together. How dare you? There's a lot in it that just I I keep going back to. Never saw it. It's uneven and there's long. Oh, you have to see this. There there are stretches of like, all right, let's go, let's move it on. But there are enough moments where you're like, holy shit, that was amazing. That's some of the coolest things we've ever seen in movies. And don't forget Octavia Spencer in it. I'm going to flash back to 1974, Young Adam. Mm -hmm. Dawson, who directed this film? Bong Joon-ho. Dawson, who directed this <laughs> film? <laughs> Bong Joon-ho. Oh, man, I wouldn't fuck with that dude. <laughs> oh, you fucking with that guy. When you hear the pan flute and he kicks his flip-flops <laughs> off, it's fucking ass kicking. Down. No way would I fuck with that dude. Now, he can keep his lunch. All right, sorry. <laughs> All right. See, that's how it used to work. That's right. But now you've convinced everyone. Now you right. poke that guy in the nose. This is a good film, so says everyone. Became a TV show. Became a TV show. That's probably more where I remember it. I should definitely watch this as a movie. I Some think would so. like it. Yeah. 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 Mm. This, this is a, this is a, everything we described, post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, all the stuff, but it's also kind of philosophical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got some thought to it. Now, Gene, I believe... Ryan sometimes will lead you astray. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I did say it was uneven. You do uh, both like it. I, I genuinely, I've seen this a number of times. The philosophical message is that, you know, love your brother, man, or is it something about no, the haves and the have nots? Yes. Because oh, okay. the back, the people in the back uh, of the train, yeah, that's, that's Chris good. Evans, and they're all, you know, that's... slumming it back there. And you need the balance of yeah, the haves and the have nots. Okay. And they're going to make their way into the front just where added, the rich people live. Just added. 12 points to my <laughs> to my score. All right. I am going with 81. Ooh, Ooh right there, buddy. 82. 85. Snowpiercer is certified fresh at 94. Wow. Oh, people have it at 72. Yeah, the that message. Adds up. That's, that's, that, you know, the message the critics respond to, you know, the black and the white and the gay and the straight, that's all good, but the haves and the Mm -hmm. have nots, that is strong for them. God damn it. All right. Next, an epic love story set against the backdrop of the American Civil War. A wounded Confederate soldier 
abandons his unit and embarks on a perilous journey to reunite with the woman he loves. Jude Law, Nicole Kidman, and Renee Zellweger mm-hmm. co-star in 2003's Cold Mountain. Now, I never saw this, I never saw but I either. swear I've heard it billed genre-wise as like a comedy, which I was very confused about. Is I, this supposed to be funny? I've not seen it either, believe it or not. I, this is one of those uh, Brokeback Mountain, Cold Mountain, stuff with mountains. <laughs> I, I just I, There's some movies I've just decided were going to depress me, and I didn't want to watch them. I don't know why. I think I decided that with this one. Chris, who's this directed by? Uh, this is directed by Anthony Mangella. Uh, kick that guy's uh, ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm not seeing anything about this being a comedy. Kalen says that he remembers this being very sad. And I went to the Wikipedia, and the first word I saw was rape. So, oh, yeah. like I said, <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> Maybe right. like Renee Zellweger played kind of a funny, I don't know. I don't know. All right. This is a weird movie that I remember the title. Qualifications. <laughs> I just never saw it, and I just never wanted to. And no one recommends it, do they? No. I like the Civil War genre. All right, I'm behind here. Uh, going to make up a mountain. few points. I have no idea. I'm going very low to try to make up some points at 46. Oh, oh shit. I went 79. <laughs> oh, shit. I said 48. Well, I don't know. I have never <laughs> seen this. Well, shit. Cold Mountain is fresh. Mm. God damn it. At 70. Oh, mm. no! And the people have it at 77. Shit. And speaking of cold mountains, we're going to end things on this Sylvester Stallone classic. Yes. Oh, so good. About a former mountain rescuer tricked into helping a gang of violent criminals who lost $100 million after a plane crash in the Rocky Mountains, it, John Lithgow. Oh God. He's so good in this. He's so good. And Michael Rooker co-star in 1993's Cliffhanger. Gina, this is genuinely a fun movie. I, I, I don't I, doubt that. I like the poster. I, I, would, I would put this on the top of your queue. Oh, okay. It's a weird poster. This looks, yeah. like, this looks like the European or Japanese yeah. poster or something. Like the, a lot of eyeliner. The, there's... The one that was in the movies were different. As I remember seeing this in Glendale, circa, what did you say, 94, 93, 93, 94? Must have been right in there. What year was it, Dawson, 93? This 92? is 1993. Yeah. I was living, I know exactly where I was living. It was right before I kind of got in K-Rock and all that kind of stuff. I was just driving my Zuzu Trooper. Fun uh, theater, fun theater watch. It did have that thing, and it's that thing that always bothers me. And I've brought it up, but it's been a while, which is you are crafting yeah. a story. There's there's the Stallone post article. An All avalanche right. of thrills. You're, cra- you're crafting a story, right? So, uh, you know, Con Air, classic film, mm-hmm. Cliffhanger, another great but you have a little bit of dilemma. Mm. You need your guy, the main character, to either go to prison mm. in the Con Air situation or cliffhanger, be completely demoralized. They're like, I, I blame myself. I'll never, I'll never climb again. Mm-hmm. Now he's destroyed by a tragedy of his own, in his mind of his own making. Right, yeah. but in the case of like Con Air. We need to send a guy to prison, but we can't have him get drunk mm-hmm. and hit. Uh, an illegal guy, you know, illegal dishwasher on a 10 speed uh, that makes him a bad guy. So instead, wrongly convicted, we have him wrongly convicted, except for all the, it was clearly self defense or something. One guy had a knife, they all circled him in the parking lot. They charged at him. The story? Yeah, well, I'm saying is, is you got to figure out a way to get this guy to prison. Mm-hmm. He can't go to prison and be a hero, right? They just make him mortal. You know, make something, some shit that happened that could have happened to anybody or what have you. And in Cliffhanger, the the one guy, Rooker, he goes up there with his lady friend. Okay. And he goes and climbs, uh, you know, the devil's armchair with his lady friend. And at some point, he, I mean, she's, by the way, she's good to go because he strings like a line across the thing 2,000 feet. No question. I mean, she's a novice and never been to, remembering hiking. Wee, let's go. Uh, Here goes and, like, and then she goes out and she gets stuck. And then 
Rooker's knee goes out. Like Stallone's like, all right, I'll handle this. He's climbing, you know, sheer cliffs and stuff. And he gets up there and he slides out there and the thing's starting to give way and the carabiner's breaking and he's reaching for her and she falls to her death. Then later on, Rooker's like, you killed her up on that mountain. It's like, (laughs) really? What did you do to help? First off, who was fucking her? (laughs) Whose knee gave out? Who thought it'd be a good idea? I told you guys, go to the fucking plywood rock wall (laughs) down on terra firma and get your feet wet. No, no, No. you had to go to the devil's armchair. Like, this one's on me for almost killing myself, sliding out there, (laughs) attempting to save her after the fucking carabiner breaks. Like... (laughs) And then, so Stallone's so like, guided. Stallone's like, I blame myself. A yeah. piece of me died on the mountain. Like, I'm never climbing again. It's like, eh, do, do something, you know, lead a group up there and have one of them get frostbite <laughs> at night and have yeah. to have their toe amputated or something. And then blame yourself. Right. Now, what he did was the most her- was heroic. heroic thing you could do, minus the result, but it still wasn't him <laughs> killing her on that mountain. I'm I'm led to believe by this poster that he does all this climbing in a singlet in the winter. <laughs> yes. Obviously. Okay. Yes. As parodied in uh, Ace Ventura too. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is, is I've learned from watching uh, Free Solo, is it? Yeah, it's a great movie. And all those movies where they have mm-hmm. legitimate rock Right, climb, real ones. Y- you can never have enough upper body. You got to bulk up. <laughs> right. You got to have yourself. a lot of... Mass. Lot of you, Mass, yeah, you 215, got, 220, and just lots thick. of lots of traps, <laughs> lots of upper that's body. Because right. when you're free climbing, yeah, you want that that's extra want. weight. That right. keeps you on the rock. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is good science. Is this Rennie Harlan too? Yeah. Pretty sure it is. It is Rennie. All right, look, this is a fun movie. The, the critics shall be snobs, but this is a this is a fun movie. And I say they're they're tough on Stallone. Maybe maybe they're snobs because of the genre, but it's it's undeniable. It is it is a fun romp of a film, and for that. I'll say sixty-eight because I'm deducted fifteen points. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, undeniably a good movie. This holds up, and uh, that the critics, no way they liked it. I said, uh, no way they gave it his due. Sorry, no way they gave it his due. I said seventy-one. <laughs> should this movie should be eighty-five right, guys, or eighty-eight? Mm-hmm. I'm out. It's been a pleasure playing with you, and I know nothing about this movie. I can't imagine them being kind. I said forty-six. It's mm. actually pretty good. It's a smart move, though, Gina. I think. Mm. We'll see. Do we have a five-point deduction? <gasps> Please be me. Cliffhanger is fresh oh, fuck. at 67%, so the oh. answer is no. No. <laughs> I picked up a hearty three and a half points. Big time. Gina Grad, mm-hmm. I got to say congratulations. Thank you. This is maybe the 80th consecutive time you've made it to the podium I'm of your score. Good. Of 77 put you firmly in third place. Ooh, certified fresh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Adam Carolla, barely fresh at 67, leaving us bald Brian rotten at 34. Woo! Wow. Back, man, in a Mr. big way. Game. You know how we do it. Now, that was a statement type game for yeah. you, bald. That's why I, I, yeah, I had to come out strong after the last performance. You'd been slumping a little a talk, bit, a and it was time to make a statement, and that was a statement-type performance you just made. All right, Dan Dunn is here. First, I'll tell you about Concrete. Uh, myth, creatine is just for bodybuilders. Fact, creatine is for any fitness routine. Talk to Dr. Drew. I have uh, Concrete. I have it at home. Uh, I actually, you know, they said, uh, well, hold up the Concrete. You know, if you're going to talk about it, hold up the container, which I'm holding now. But if you notice, it's empty because I emptied it and took it home oh, because nice. uh, I take it because uh, Dr. Drew was like, uh, oh, yeah, you got to get on it. Uh, first, stimulant free pre-workout supplement. That's concrete. Concrete, patented creatine. HCL is the uh, favorite of elite and informed athletes. All the strength and endurance benefits of creatine without any of the negative side effects like the cramps, diarrhea. It's uh, it's the only creatine females should use for increased lean muscle. No water retention or bloat either. And uh, you can give it as a gift. Nice holiday stocking stuffer. 
It is concrete, right, Dawson? Take control of your health, both body and mind, building a better you with concrete. Register now at concrete.com slash podcast. That's C-O-N dash C-R-E-T dot com forward slash podcast to receive free membership to Planet Fitness for an entire year, plus a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. Available now online and in store at Walmart, concrete is truly changing the game. All right, Dan Dunn's going to bring a few cocktails, some holiday cocktails in here. We'll talk to him right after this. We've got about uh, three weeks left or a month left, and we're up against it. And uh, Lynch is very dutiful. And we're now at the point where I get my car for long commutes at night, during the day, like almost any time, although Mike has a, has a day job. But on weekends, it's just wide open. Oh. So I was going out to do comedy. I had like an hour and 10 minute drive and then another hour home. And I just get on the phone with him and he reads the book to me. So we're now at the phase where he's reading all the okay. chapters. Nice. And then I just sit back and go, oh, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I don't remember that's that one. That's clever fine. take. Is that yours? <laughs> is that mine? So there's a lot of that with the, the occasional stop that didn't make sense. It, it's so much, it, when you hear it audibly, at least for me, it, it's so much easier to pick out the yes. parts that don't mm-hmm. flow yes. and don't sound right or use the wrong word or I something. Found, I found so many like typos and mistakes when I was reading the audio book. Right. reading it out loud. Right. It, it sounds weird to go out loud, mm. but go out loud, you'll find the mistakes. Have someone else read it to you while you're just driving at night. Yeah. You hear every little syllable that's off or word that you want to swap out for something else. Uh, also, I will tell people I've been doing these uh, cameos, and I will say this. Um, if people send in a message, and then you send it back, yeah, and then they pay it's it. it's fun. Um, it sounds like a pain in the ass, but what I've been realizing is every message is, my husband, he loves you. Mm-hmm. He listens to everything. He's a huge fan. Now I listen. I love him. We have three beautiful kids. <laughs> Give a shout out to, and it's like, it's literally you just, it's someone reading you fan mail, yeah. essentially. It's you it's, thanking people for yeah, supporting it's you. it's not really like, okay, I got to sing the dreidel song. <laughs> it's more like people just telling you how much they love you. Yeah. And it's, uh, I it's recommend fun. it to those of you who are thinking about it. Uh, Dan Dunn, oh, what do you got for us? Are man? you on Cameo? <laughs> I wouldn't know about swapping out words because all my books are perfect. Oh, oh well yes. said. Quite the, yes. quite the God, thank you. How you Dan feeling, is Dan? A, Dan is a good writer, by the way. I've read Dan, Dan, a couple of his books. Dan went to a holiday party last night. And mm-hmm. um, let's just say I'm glad we're drinking today. Okay. The hair, oh, hair oh, the dog. dog. Yeah, Maria Menounos had a thing that I, I just said... Uh, I wanted to go, and then I was like, nah, I, was I gotta to drive around and read here a book country. read to me. Yeah, <laughs> never went. Yeah, it was, uh, I got up today, and I was like, okay, it's gonna be fun at the Corolla show. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see straight. No, I'm good, actually. I, you know, I don't, I don't never really overdo it. Sure, mm-hmm. well, you know, you're a professional. We should have Dan should be the one to tell. What is your, what is your hangover remedy? I'm sure there's plenty of people today. It's, take uh, your... today it's an Irish coffee. I know, but we're starting. <laughs> with. You gotta, you, yeah. you gotta do work. You gotta, you gotta show up for something. I'll take a, I'll take a shot of Fernet Branca. I knew what that is. Isn't yeah. that a that's like a an bartender's Italian bartender's handshake? That's yeah. the bartender's hand. That's exactly right. I will take a shot of that or two. Gets me right. In Why the is it called the uh, bartender's handshake? All bartenders do it. It it, it really kind of stemmed from San Francisco. It just became in that San Francisco bartending community. Really? Fernet became the shot that everybody does. Oh. And now when you go, especially the morning after, all the bartenders are, are pounding Fernet. I think Brian was looking for That's something like a banana <laughs> and a buttermilk. I don't think he was talking so much more yeah. booze. Oh, you I, mean, if oh, I know you mean Brian. food. Yeah, no, just Gatorade. <laughs> here's it. Here's this. Greasy <laughs> food. Like getting drunker. <laughs> Hydrate, greasy food. Sex, very good. Mm, Seriously, okay. gets the blood flowing, gets sure, that hangover okay. going away. Like Preferably with somebody else, but you could do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, the VR I will not goggles. tell you if I did that this morning or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just handed out these drinks, and right. I don't mm-hmm. want anybody getting weird. You touched our sugar cubes. What is the fernet? What what is that? It's like a. It's kind of bitter. It's a it's a liqueur, uh, uh-huh. and uh, it's it's nasty. It's a little bit bitter. It yeah. is it is sad that you know all the potassium and all the electrolytes and all the hydration. It's all great, but it's not as good as more <laughs> booze. <laughs> That's right. Well, that's even a line in uh, The Sopranos when Carmela's really sh- sick and she goes, take a little finette to settle the system. All so this right. is a thing. Yeah. 
All right, so what do you got? Holiday libations? I, I do. I brought some stuff today. We're starting with an Irish coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, we've already prepared these. I'll let, I'll let you know. So whenever we do drinks, I always say this. The key is the ingredients. If you, mm-hmm. use, if you use shitty ingredients, you're going to get a shitty drink. I, this coffee that I'm using is from my hometown, from right outside of Philadelphia, a place called Delco, Delaware County, oh. which was made famous recently, Mayor of Easttown. Oh, show. great show. That's Delaware County, Delco. This coffee is called Delco Blend. It's from a place called House Cup. Mm-hmm. And it's shipped out here especially for this House Cup coffee. The whiskey we're using is Dubliner, which is a, a newish Irish whiskey mm-hmm. that's made in Dublin, which is warms my heart to know that, that Irish whiskey is making a huge comeback. It's got a really cool little package yeah. in here. This is aged in bourbon casks. Uh, it's it's kind of a very hot new Irish whiskey that's, that's kind of fresh- Happening. Modern. The kids are all do. Look at that labeling yeah, right there. Right, cool. that's that's a good looking. Bottle. Booze is. Uh, it's really the same as fashion. Mm-hmm. It it never really changes. It's just we come back around to yep. it. Bell bottoms or wide collars mm-hmm. or thin ties or wide ties or hairstyles. Mm-hmm. We don't Hush realize. Puppies. Yeah, we just we just cycle back. Yep. We just cycle back to yeah. it. It was. Uh, I mean. Whiskey, uh, rye was weird. Gin was unthinkable. If you, you know, I mean, when you were a kid, yeah. and you were you drinking would... or college or well, not yeah. me, but I just mean it was all you're vodka. That age. Yeah, and there was like tequila Zima. shots. We want to get fucked up, yeah. but there, there was no rye, and there was no gin, and well, there's no anything. There was definitely no Irish whiskey. I mean, when <laughs> when we were younger. There was basically three or four commercially available Irish whiskeys in the United States. It was, you know, mm-hmm. and that was it. And now the categories exploded. I think we did a we did a whole segment on Irish whiskey mm-hmm. once. So, so this is one of the newer ones, the Dubliner. I think I really enjoy it. What do you guys think? Oh, and the other thing I did. So what you want to do is take your heavy whipping cream. Yeah, I noticed. Mm-hmm. I just put this into a into a, uh, a shaker and mm-hmm. just shake the shit out of it. Put mm-hmm. it right on top of there. Put it over a spoon. Drip Why? It on top Why of did your, you do that? Put it over so the that spoon. It, it's floating. Ah. You want it to float on top of the. You want the uh, heavy or, whippy, cr- yeah. whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. Put it in a shaker. Mm-hmm. Shake it. Pour it on top. So you got your coffee, your Irish whiskey. Put two sugar cubes in there too. Why is the heavy? Why can't we shake up the heavy whipping cream in the container it showed up in? If you're using all of it, I guess. I yeah, well, because it's well, there's not uh, enough space. In yeah, if it's there. full, you, you need you can't the space. Do it. You need oh, okay. the you need the uh, empty right, but space. But if you have space, you could. Yeah, if you, you have space, that. I guess you right. could do that. Yeah. Okay, so, this is delicious. Just check it. It's really, this, this is, is really, really good, good right? It's a yeah. drink. This yeah. feels mm-hmm. warm Thank and you. delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. I feel better already. So it's coffee, the Irish whiskey, cream, couple sugar cubes, couple sugar cubes. Don't you don't have to have to stir it up or anything. You could stir the coffee and the whiskey if you want, but then you then you float the cream on top. Yeah, it is a. I to me this just gets me in the holiday spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is yeah. so yeah. good. So that's the one. That's what we got house cup coffee, Dubliner whiskey, any brand. We I went with the Kroger, yeah, the Genera Kroger heavy whipping cream. I'm very familiar yes. with that one. Yeah. Question: Is it? Are, are we still allowed to say? Can I Irish that coffee up for you? Oh. Yeah, in my family. Okay, yeah, in my good. World. All right. The did you guys? Did your yeah. parents? Uh, my uh, neither one of my parents drank mm. at all, and then um, my I think it. I think it. Like they. It's not. It's not like they weren't alcoholics. They just didn't drink. There was they pleasure wasn't a thing for sure. them. So like most people. Might not be drinkers, but they still enjoy a glass of wine. Right. You know, with the meal or or whatever it is. Um, out of three adults, my my dad, my stepmom, and my my stepdad, my mom, and my grandparents, uh, my grandmother would have a glass of red wine. That was it. There was nothing around the house. My grandfather occasionally would get a generic beer. From, oh, what was it called? Uh, uh, it just said beer on it. I think it was a, a Scotch brand or <laughs> no. something. Like literally, Budweiser Kirkland. and Miller were like a bridge too far yeah, for him. <laughs> and. Um, she would just get beer. Kroger brand. <laughs> yeah. And at, at the Lucky's, which right. is now the John's, I guess, where, mm-hmm. where you yep, are. Yep. And and that was it. There was no there was nothing laying around. There's nothing to pinch. Mm-hmm. You know, you couldn't have done like I'm gonna take a pinch and water it down or get into the cabinet, the booze cabinet. Sure. Or, yeah. No booze cabinet, Ugh. no booze, no bottles, <laughs> no no nothing. If you if you went to my dad's house at any time, you would not find a bottle of wine, a can of beer. 
not because he had a problem, just because it, it, like, it was like something. Couldn't not find interested. a fucking Playboy at that dude's house either. You could probably ferment the raisins if you waited long enough. We could make it in the toilet. You'll, you'll yeah, appreciate right. this because it's about my green, my mean grandma. Uh, she did not drink. She never drank. Maybe I don't know a glass of wine at Christmas. You know what I mean? It's probably like good because she probably would have gotten violent. Yeah, well, got got a a <laughs> However, her husband, my very sweet grandpa. He drank. Now that Ooh. makes sense. And he liked, uh, he drank Manhattans mostly, which he claimed, mm. you ought to be 50 years old to drink a Manhattan. Right. Uh, but uh, occasionally he'd dip into the wine and mean grandma, her, my dad still says this to this day. Don't drink wine. You get stupid when you drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, tell him that. My dad uh, definitely drank. His beer of choice was Schaefer, oh, which yeah. has one of the greatest slogans of all time. Mm. Schaefer is the one beer to have. When you're having, having more beer. than one. Oh, oh one. wow. It's just like, you know what? We're just going to throw it out there. Right. You're a fucking drunk. Drink, Schaefer. <laughs> right. And my dad was, and then he gave it up. My mom did not drink. I think it got in the way of the bipolarism. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. I feel like what was going on in her head didn't it was require any alcohol. Yeah. So yeah. it was good. But my dad was a drinker, and then he wasn't one day. He ah. Couldn't, couldn't. Uh, keep going at that pace. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he stopped. But uh, I wonder how many homes minus... Any sober issues because mm-hmm. my family had no sober issues. You just could not find a bottle of booze sure. in the home. Our like, house there did not exist. There was no Wait, cabinet. There was no nothing. Your parents' house or yours now? Parents' house. Okay. No grandparents. I never saw anyone drink alcohol because Jews, at least in my anecdotal, they're not into alcohol. Our drug of choice is food, so uh, we really didn't well, have any prescription pills. Uh, pills yeah, as well. but back in the day, it was mostly schmaltz right. and salt. Uh, yeah. Interesting. All right. Sorry, Dan. That's okay. This yeah. is the this is great. Yeah. Yeah. This is really up. good. All right. So now uh, let's go next to we're going to do eggnog because I know Ooh. Ace loves eggnog. So what I did here is our friends at Fresh Victor. Remember, we had the Fresh Victor mixers on here. Mm-hmm. I hit them up and I said, now I need to clarify. They do not make this <laughs> for commercially available but my friend H, Joseph Ehrman, who was with Fresh Victor as a bar up in San Francisco, called Elixir, whipped this up for us. Oh, my God. S- overnighted his, it down his here. With dick. Oh, that's, that's right. right. He stirred it with his cup. He said whipped it up. <laughs> sent it down here for us. And nice. I tried some last night. And this might be the best eggnog Ooh. that I've ever had. Again, mm. it's not available for Fresh Victor. But if you go to their Instagram, he said he's going to put the recipe up there wow. so mm-hmm. everybody can make Ooh. it themselves. So I brought glasses. Fancy. Look at this. Look at mm. look at these wow. glasses. They're very Does fresh. this make you feel uh, mm. festive? Yes. Can you help me, Chris, a little bit here? All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just pour eggnog. And what do you guys want to start with? I brought, I brought bourbon, and mm-hmm. I brought rum, which are the two staples of of eggnog. What do you want to start with? I, I don't think, really know that much about eggnog. I think so. bourbon right. for, for so, me, or is brandy a brandy? You can, do, brandy. you can do brandy, but it, do brandy. rum and mm-hmm. rum and bourbon are what I like to do. So we'll start. Actually, let's start with the rum. Let's start with the Batiste Thanks rum. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, because there's a reason, I okay. think. I don't okay. know. I'm just trying to act like I'm in charge here. Right. I'm the booze guy. That's All right. Good. All right. We'll, we'll start with, what do you want to start with? Bourbon, he said. All right. We'll go with bourbon. <laughs> rabbit hole. Rabbit bourbon, hole. He rabbit said, hole. sounds like a 30 song. <laughs> what? Bourbon, he said. He's a lucky fella because bourbon, he said. He comes to the show. He stops it right away because it's bourbon, he said. And bourbon I said, said. And I love him. Ooh. Yeah, like it just feels like a 30s song, right? All right, so, so all right, while he's a light doing pour that, for yeah, me. Uh, light pour, yeah. So this, we're going to use Rabbit Hole Cave Hill bourbon, one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. This is my go-to what bourbon is, at home that I drink. I have the blue label. What's the difference between that and the, the blue? So this is one of the four. This is a four-grain bourbon huh? uh, that, they, that they make. They, they have about four staples in their line. They make okay. a lot of expressions, but this is one of the core nice. Core ones of the brand, the Cave Hill. It's about sixty bucks a bottle. I I would put it up there with any bourbon. You're going to spend one hundred and fifty dollars a bottle on the guy, Cave Zamanian, who makes it is a master cool. at it. And we're going to put the. Oh, I brought nutmeg too. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. 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 yeah I know. You got to have nutmeg. You got to. You got to. It's yeah. weird. You, you, nutmeg and uh, paprika or paprika, <laughs> depending on how you know who says it, but. It adds a lot more than you'd think for, for sure. some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, in stuff you wouldn't even expect it. It's great in like a creamed spinach. It's great in lots of stuff. Well, well, Nutmeg is sort of inert, but yet, that's yet, okay. yet necessary. I don't know if I'm going to like or make you happy. <laughs> Christy made fresh eggnog this weekend. Well, fresh. Wait, I'm excited, for you, to, I'm excited for you to do this. because. 
Wow. How good is that? Wow. (laughs) It might be the best eggnog I've ever had. It is. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And you know what is, um, as much as I like to talk uh, smack about my mom, (laughs) she had, she would get a nutmeg nut. Oh, oh real? Of course she would. And just, just that hit I it because it made it, it was like at some point her weird obsession with whole food right. and natural right. food and stuff. Once in a while, it paid dividends. Mostly, it was a punishment. Sure, sure, it was sure. a brutal, brutal punishment. But every once in a while, you get the fresh. I think you can buy, as I remember, just like a you little must be nut able to. and just can. kind of grate it. It comes in the spice jars and it comes with the nuts, and you take it out and you grate it. Roast. Happy oh, holidays. Yeah. There we awesome. go. So again, we got the eggnog mm. with the cave hill uh, from Rabbit Hole. It's mm-hmm. about as good as it gets. This right? tastes yeah. like an old school holiday party. Got a little spice This to is it. fantastic. Oh, man. By the way, you have to finish it because I didn't bring any other glasses. So we, have, <laughs> we need to Shit. fill it back up Jesus. with the rum. So you have no choice. There's mm. nothing to dump it in. Mm. So, Santa, you. Combine this with the coffee. Santa <laughs> wants you to drink it all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you oh think? Oh my God! This is this warms warms my belly. I feel so much better. All right, hangover mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, already mm. gone. Irish coffee, eggnog. I've I've thought it was weird in general to have cream mixed with liquor, but I get it today. Yeah, so, you know, like white good. Russians and stuff. This, this is, is fantastic. Good. It yeah. just makes you want to put on sweatpants, get on the couch, put the game on, mm-hmm. cozy socks. Mm. This Give is good. Up. Mm-hmm. Rub your belly. Cozy socks, my gay porn that's, name. That's, <laughs> Spell it with an X. Um, so yeah, two again, I, what, what do I need to cover here? We, are, we, we know axes. about we know about Three rabbit axes. hole. Rabbit hole was one of our best ofs, I think, mm. last year, wasn't it? We did the best of. I think rabbit hole was one of them. Wasn't oh, it's it, on Brian? my bar. That's, that's yeah. just great. Let me so, ask you guys a porn question: mm-hmm. Is triple X really a thing? Because oh, once no. you get to an X rating, NBA you're does an not X. Rate triple X. <laughs> That was just them, right? Yes, that was marketing. That, that, that was, was the marketing. guy from Defending Your Life who all came, nude. I came up with all, all nude. nude. <laughs> all nude. Yeah. Right? The MPAA does not rate things triple X. <laughs> this is me. Look at you, man. You're like, mm. you're bartending the hell out of this today. He worked at a Bennigan's. Okay. <laughs> What'd you work at? Uh, uh, TJ Fridays. TJ Fridays. TJ Fridays. Oh, Bennigan's out here? <laughs> I thought that was a Midwestern thing. It is. It oh, okay. Is. There was Ooh. one, there was one down by the, Ocean down, huh. uh, oh God, Huntington, Newport. I'm trying to think where, but I'll anyway. be honest, the rum, the rum makes it a little smoother. The rum does, yeah. Okay, oh, really? so let, let me tell you about this rum. It's called Batiste Rum. It's they're based here in California. Uh, they don't make the rum here; they make it down in the Caribbean. Uh, this is their this is their rum, the Reserve Rum that they just came out with. It's it's fantastic. What I love about this rum, it's the only one that's made from sugar cane juice. Oh, really? Most other rums, oh, it's molasses. Know, they press it. This is the only one made from pure sugar cane juice. It is also the only spirit in the world third party certified carbon neutral. Whoa! Okay? This is about as this is about as. Uh, Progressive as you can get. Yeah, and you're doing nothing good for the bad earth. Nothing bad is happening this. to the earth with yeah. this Batiste rum. How do they certify something carbon neutral? They hire some firm to come in and say, <laughs> yeah, they do it. Yeah, no, but it's uh, they're mm. very, very environmentally aware mm. at this company. I love it. It's what it's it's very eco positive, uh, fair trade, non GMO, no additives. There's nothing Damn. in this thing. Most rums they're going to put stuff in there. They're doing a little nothing. This is wow. pure. How rum. much a bottle? Uh, you should, well, we can look it Hold up. Hold on. Let me Thank you. stick my hand. I might pull it out of my ass. I'm going <laughs> to go f- f- 50 bucks. Okay. Let's say about 50 bucks. So it's a little on the higher side. Maybe 40 bucks. Where do you between, want it to be? Between <laughs> the bourbon and the rum, I detect a little bit of a tang with the rum that I kind of I kind of like. You like it. Okay. Yeah. Chris, Chris bailed on me. So wow, they're both. Me. Right? I know. It's hard to pick a winner because they're both winners. Very different. Like, Very that is, good. That is, uh, they're both. I, they're both spectacular. I'm telling you, I'm digging it right now. And they say again, the eggnog yeah. blows me away. It's I've the never best. had eggnog with. Um, I, I only had eggnog like two times in my life, and I never had it with alcohol. Oh, this really? is really a game You're changer. Missing out. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Gina's like, I can't wait to get home and make this. This is fantastic. Yeah, well, like I said, the recipe's on the Fresh Ooh. Victor Instagram. And by the way, Fresh Victor was the one that we all went crazy for when we tried like the uh, like juices. yeah, it was like watermelon jalapeno and like these. Can I those? tell you when I did when I brought that in here? Your fans went crazy mm-hmm. to the point where the CEO of the company wrote me a letter saying, thank you so, like, r- literally made our year because so many Corolla fans 
we're buying the fresh Victor. It was so good. Well, yeah. I got to say, you know, we talked about it in that episode, but I probably don't remember. The, the weird stuff with the yellow dye number seven mm. and all the high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. Why do you, why? Why, why would you, would you do that? You know what I mean? You're So here's the thing uh, on mixers. You're throwing a party. Mm-hmm. You're buying things. You're, you're hosting. You're hosting. You're, By you're, all means, you're doing get something. Get a good ingredient. You bought a honey baked ham. It cost right. you thirty three dollars. You know what I mean? <laughs> Spend an extra eighteen dollars on mixers. Like just get something yeah. good. Yes. There's nothing worse than that weird syrupy plastic squeezy mm-hmm. shitty big handle stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it drives me nuts. Yeah. It, it, uh, why not? It's it's like it'll make or break. You you got the decent yeah. booze and you're screwing it up with the shitty mix. Get the good stuff. All right, Dan, I'm going to cut you short a little bit there because we got the news. Oh, okay. Do you not want to do this last one we got here? All right. It's brand new. Brand Didn't new. Get the last one this together. Is bra- and only because I news. know you're going to love the name. Oh, yeah. Jim Beam Cream. <laughs> That's your other porn name. Come on, right. you know you want some Jim Beam Cream. <laughs> you know you want What it. is this? Is it a dessert liquor? By the way, this is brand new. I mean, it's not even in stores yet. They just put it out. Jim Beam Cream, it's a liqueur. They're trying to compete with... Um, you know, Bailey's, the holiday, basically. They're going mm-hmm. for that market. $20 a bottle. I have not tried it. So Ooh, I'm gonna, we're going to let Gina go go in first because she's already slugged down her <laughs> eggnog. You're the only one with an empty glass Delicious. right now. So let's go, Gina. Here we go. Jim Beam Cream. I love it. Are you ready to put some Jim Beam Cream in I your mouth? I want it in my mouth. All right, here you go. <laughs> That's can you say that pour. again? Can you say that again? I want it in my mouth. Slower. I want it in my mouth. All right, let's see here. Gina's What's the alcohol content? On it's it? only 30. It's uh, 30%. Thir- so, excuse me, 30 proof, uh, 15% alcohol. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's about, it's kind of what wine is. So yeah. what pretty think? much what wine is? Jim Beam Cream. That's goddamn delicious. Jim Beam Cream. This Getting is like a- Thumbs up from Gina. Almost like an alcoholic Werther's. Mm-hmm. Like just a really nice sort of candy right, flavor. This it. is really nice. Let me try it. All right. Let me hit uh, one of our sponsors, oh, Fiverr. Mm. It's hard to make something out of nothing. Turning that big idea into reality can feel overwhelming. There's Fiverr, man. With Fiverr, turning that idea into something is easier than ever. Experts in data design, marketing, technology, website building, music, video, animation, and so much more. You can find it all at Fiverr. Simply search for the services you need, set the timeline, and the price you want. That's what you can do with Fiverr. It's a simple-to-use platform with great customer service and Qualified freelancers in every field. So if you need expertise and you're getting something off the ground, design, marketing, technology, websites, music, video, animation, whatever, it's Fiverr, right, Dawson? Every successful something was once nothing. Head to Fiverr.com and turn nothing into something today. Receive 10% off your first order by using code ADAM at F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Again, that's Fiverr.com, code ADAM. All right, we'll take a quick break. Dan's going to hang out. Gina's going to try to find her way through the news <laughs> right after this. I got to tell you, uh, I don't know if Brian was kidding earlier about making a suicide, but I wasn't, and it's phenomenal. It's like coffee and eggnog and booze. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, I put it all in one cup, and I am sipping it happily. All right, it's that time of year for some of those end-of-year uh, predictions and a look back, and we're going to do that right now. Let's talk about Time Magazine's Athlete of the Year. I think it's surprising and also completely unsurprising. It ain't Tom Brady. It's not LeBron James. It's another goat, um, but somebody who didn't complete their sporting event this year, who's still getting a lot of praise for putting... Simone. There you go. Mm -hmm. Simone Biles. Controversial pick to some, most decorated gymnast of all time, pulled out of the Tokyo Olympics due to some mental health issues and hasn't really competed much this year, but gained a lot of support for putting those struggles out there. All right. It's all fucked up. It's all over. It's like athlete of the year. Mm. Just sticking. But but what about her courageous stance on mental... It's like, all right, (laughs) that's fine. It has nothing to do with athlete of the year. That we're, we're getting corrupted. The, the, the Oscars is fucked up. Everything is fucked up. Everything but the aforementioned Indy 500 is fucked up because mm-hmm. that's just whoever fucking mm-hmm. finishes first. Yeah. Japanese guy a year ago. Fine. Whatever. That's well, the whole point. We're, re, we're playing too much. We're reimagining into, athlete of the yes, year. Yes, we can't reimagine everything. It's just an athlete of the year. All right. She had an issue. She dropped out. Well, I, and even she would, I would imagine, say like, look, I know I'm not exactly going to be the athlete of the year this year, but I had to take care of myself. You know? But she inspired so many other Olympians to drop out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
not go for the gold. It's not athlete of the year. Like, I, here's what I'm saying. Oscars, whatever. Athlete of the year. Stop factoring in a whole bunch of other stuff. Just what went on yeah. on the field. Focus on the I mean, even the if, the, look, the, sometimes there's athletes that go, well, when he's not here, he's in Cambodia sweeping for right. landmines. Like, that's awesome. I just want to go off the stats. They treat it like the Heisman. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just pretty much what kind of numbers did you bring yeah. up? Uh, would you like to know what Pantone's color of the year is going to be? Hmm. Now, last year I liked it, and I've seen mm-hmm. a lot of houses adopt this, and I thought it was really cute. The, it was a dual colors last year. It was gray and yellow, and especially like in Studio City, there's a lot of gray houses with like a nice yellow door, and I thought that was very fun. Mm. Uh, they are reimagining color mm. because they've announced their color for next year, and it's a color they made up. Uh, the company nice. says they Bold. wanted a shade that would reflect the new innovations and inventions that came from, you know, all the technology and, and everything, uh, you know, the social everything last year. So it's called Very Perry, and it's essentially periwinkle, but with some other tones. Uh, according to them, though, it's uh, the dynamic periwinkle blue hue with a vivifying violet red undertone that blends the faithfulness and consistency of blue with the energy and excitement of red. I like periwinkle. Yeah. Painted my uh, bedroom in an old house, periwinkle. Um, but also, you got to be careful the color of the year because you, you look back a few years, it was yeah. avocado appliances and <laughs> yeah. burnt orange countertops. Yeah, like, I don't know, is it always the best? Does it stand the test of time? Shook no. Hated. Yeah, that's. I think that's kind of their point, though. Like this, this is going to symbolize 2022. I think it's Jim Beam cream is the color. Of the year. <laughs> All right, well, so, so it's a nice cream. That. It's just off white a little bit. It's the Jim color Beam of cream. my walls. Mm-hmm. Speaking yeah. of that, when uh, and this sounds like a like a drink, but it always screwed everyone up. The two most popular colors when I was a painter and then then beyond were Navajo white and Swiss coffee. Which does sound something like something you're one of your bar mixologists We're drinking might, it. might yeah. So the problem was is Navajo white was darker than Swiss coffee. So one had the word coffee in it, yeah. the other had the word white. white in it, and it would screw everyone else because they go put the light on the baseboard and then the darker up on the yeah, wall, the white. and you go with the coffee instead of the Intuitive. instead of the uh, Navajo. Intuitively, white. Yeah. Swiss coffee sounds kind of mocha ish. Yes, yeah. not if you Chris. Find me a picture of Swiss coffee. It is essentially white. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm Why did you put the word coffee? What what place Throwing is coffee in us? Yes, insane. and the Navajo white isn't white. White and coffee. You're right. Okay. Right. While you're doing that, let's do. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> So oh, Navajo, side by side. Yeah, Swiss coffee is more of like an eggshell, and Navajo's beige. Navajo white's like taupe. Almost. Yeah, like it's a shade. Like khaki. Under, yeah. yeah. It haunted my youth. I get it. My youth was haunted. I don't even know any of the words you're saying. <laughs> Taupe, periwinkle. I've never heard of any of these. If you ask me what periwinkle was, I, I don't know. Light Blue. purple. Top. What did yeah. you say? It's, Top. It's, Taupe. A, what, it's, a, Taupe. It's, it's what, like, I don't purple know is gay, <laughs> Yeah. Blue is straight, and periwinkle is bi. Okay. All right. Mm. Swing. So that's about what it is. Swing and periwinkle. I just don't know. You know what it is? I've never owned anything, like a home or anything like that, so I wouldn't know Painting. You're yeah, right. I would call my landlord and say, hey, can you paint the house? And yeah. They would paint it whatever color they want to paint it. Periwinkle. Perry. Perry. I don't Very know. Perry. Wouldn't know Perry. Periwinkle house. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about some of the most mispronounced words of the year. Um, this is according to the U.S. captioning company. So we do know for a fact that these have been the most mispronounced because we're talking about TV broadcasts that got it wrong. And then the captioning company sort of went haywire. Um, I thought it was pronounced Omicron. Mm-hmm. Apparently it's Omicron. Omicron. Like, is the Greek letter Omicron or Omicron? It must be Omicron. Okay. I always heard Omicron. All right. No That's one of the most mispronounced, and we're hearing that all the time. Um, now by the way, the I was done with this variant. I'm like, no, I'm not learning any more variants. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with the variants. I've learned way too many new words yeah. in the last five years. I got I to gotta cap it. Well, what I don't know what comes next in the Greek alphabet, but we had the lambda. We had the mu. We had the delta. So, Brian, do you know what's next? Uh, 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 pi? Theta. Uh, ooh, I like that. Is it pi? Chris, look up the Greek Come alphabet. On. COVID pi. Yeah. Um, so while while he's looking that up, oh, I mentioned this word before, and I, th- I think it should die a quick death, chuggy. No. Because it mm-hmm. makes me feel really old. That's Gen Zers making fun of millennials who are now oh, 40-ish. Wow. 
sick. <laughs> Shugi. Shugi is like, you know, you're out of style and you're trying to be in style. Um, Billie Eilish, people are having a hard time with that. And people still can't get their mouth around Chipotle. We can't say Billie Eilish? Yeah, people are, according to TV eyelash. broadcaster, eyelash, no. maybe eyeless, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, that's screwed up a lot in pie the captioning. Pie is, is the next. Oh, COVID the pie. So says, Delicious. So says Brian mm. and uh, Chris. Other mispronounced words, Dogecoin. Ethereum, these are all, you know, crypto, and uh, Glasgow, not hmm. Glasgow, Jonathan Lithgow. Who says not Glasgow? Lithgow. I don't know. That's how it's spelled. Here's the thing. In, in the booze business, there's a lot of things that get mispronounced, and I'm always, I'm curious what your thoughts are on how, what's the appropriate way is it dickish? Like if someone says Keep there's walking. a scotch, do you, if someone, there's a scotch called Oban, right? Yeah. O B A N. A lot of people call it Oban. Whatever. So what's the What's the cool way to correct? Uh, is it to go your because I feel like I need to correct them because otherwise they're going to go through life mispronouncing the word. I think you have to personally, unless you keep walking. They're going to show up at the mill yeah. on Monday and mispronounce <laughs> Oban. Oban. I was drinking and Oban. all the fucking guy, all the cutters are going to turn on all the guys at the quarry. I mean, here's no. I think you should be allowed to correct. There, there's no harm and no foul if it's a word that doesn't really exist. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's almost like pronouncing someone's last name right. and you mispronouncing it because there's it's not a, a word. It right. doesn't you don't feel the shame of a word that is a name or something no. that didn't formally You're exist. It's just no. them just how to do it. it. It becomes shaming when it's a city that's been around <laughs> for a thousand years right. and you're fucking it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our Kansas. Well, people, right. will, uh, people that come out to visit have never been to California. They'll say, oh, we're going to Wilshire Boulevard. Yeah, it's spelled so that way. Later. So I will, here's how I correct. So I don't later. tell them that they're stupid. I just go, oh, you're going to Wilshire. Yeah. And say it the right way. Smart. Well, here's yeah, that, an on. That's how you do it. And then I go, you're going to Wilshire, you fucking idiot. There you go. Yeah, that's what that's I here's a, on. Here's an interesting one, now that I've moved out that direction. Um, PCH, Pacific Coast mm -hmm. Highway. Half the people say the mm -hmm. PCH. No. And I'm like, I'm from here. We just said PCH. You're not if supposed you're to say P PCH. You're not yeah. supposed to say the PCH. I was corrected all the time on Everyone news radio. Everyone who moves out here says Carpet the, and then they correct me. Nope. And then I'm like, I've lived here. Mm -hmm. They're wrong. By the, the way, PCH. you know what? Well, well, reason 128 why LA sucks. You live, you come from a place. You're you're from the PA, right, Kansas, uh, the Bay Area. You're allowed to correct me from L.A. on anything. It's not Permontes, it's Permantes. Come on, use your head. You know what I mean? Like you can, oh, yeah. you, you, a start of bread, and, and and it's not Bowdoin. I just walk backwards. I just say, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're from L.A., someone moves here from bumfuck, and you go, it's it's not the piece. Yeah, well, so says you. <laughs> like, you don't get any fucking hometown knowledge. You get no hometown knowledge. You get no credit for any of us. It's L.A. It's everyone's town. Yeah. There's no locals. You don't know anything that somebody from Arkansas or uh, Tiburon. Uh, no, Tiburon. You, you just know. You don't know one. anything. You're from here. Sorry, fuck faces. I'm from here. I have a couple of inside things. Yeah. It's, it's my business. Why don't I get any hometown? You at all the hometown shit you want. I, I don't everyone, go to your hometown and fucking correct you. you everyone's can, so desperate to claim LA as their hometown. It's yes. not Kenyatta. All right, smart ass. It's not Tajunga. <laughs> yes. Well, where did the the come from in the first place? Because I'm on on the East Coast, you don't say the 95. Well, you, say, things, you just say 95. A lot of highways and freeways say that. I don't think you say the that. anywhere outside of LA. I'm from the Bay Area. We just said 280. So you don't say the five. Never once. If but in you, the Midwest, you say the. Oh, I the, would say the. the I would say the five. The I thirty five. He says in San Francisco they don't say that. Oh, but here I might say the five. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But this is the only place I know that adds the hmm. to yeah, the highways. I agree, but I still say the PCH is wrong. You're right, and, and it is we wrong. need to adhere to that. Yeah. Sorry. It, I can tell you in broadcasting, you get corrected, and you they say do not say the. For PCH. Hmm. So well, as right. someone from Philadelphia, I'm here to tell you, you're fucking wrong. It's the PCH. <laughs> okay, okay Mr. Good. California, <laughs> keep it down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did we, we didn't, I don't think we touched on this, but there's an update. It's great. That boss, you might have heard about him, who became super famous for uh, firing 900 employees on Zoom, mm -hmm. on like a three minute Zoom call. He's taking some time off. I'd hire that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, the height of efficiency. That's true. And and he respects efficiency because his name is Vishal Garg. He's the CEO of uh, an online mortgage firm, Better.com. And according to Lad Bible, accused staff of being lazy and said they're so unproductive 
perspective, they were basically stealing from the company and its customers. Wow. I like and him. the call was three minutes. He fired 9% of the staff. However... But you know how yeah. long it takes, like, the Turk to walk down the hall yeah. and ask for everyone's playbook everyone's at 4.30 like, in the morning and everything? And just put them all up on one yeah. screen and shit can them. That's did what you he see did. the video, though? The way his body language, I watched it, and it was like, I he could give a shit that he was fired. <laughs> yeah. He was, like, lounging back. I think he had, like, a sweater tied around yeah. his fucking neck. And he was just like, hey, I think he started by saying, if you're on this yep. Zoom... You're one of the unlucky ones. You're one of the unlucky ones. <laughs> and and he was just sitting back, and he's in this plush office with his fucking chinos on, and just look at, like... I was like, dude, what are you... Like, mm. at least... Pretend, oh no! Like you have some compassion here. You could didn't well, care. Well, well, some outside services felt the same way. So uh, an internal memo went around, and Vice said that uh, he's now taking some time off. Here's what the memo said: Vishal and the board wanted to provide better employees an update given the very regrettable events over last week. Mm-hmm. Vishal will be taking time off effectively immediately. The board has engaged an independent third party firm to do a leadership um, and can evaluate their, sorry, I got to put this away, can evaluate their (laughs) overall workplace culture. The recommendation of this assessment will be taken into account to build a long-term, sustainable, and positive culture at better. He should have hopped on Cameo and got like Snoop Dogg. Yes! You know what I mean? It'd be the best $82 he ever spent. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to couch it You get a celeb. He drops the bomb, puts What's a little of his own flavor yep. on it. You know what I mean? Yep. This is just like up in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. George bon Jovi's going to perform an acoustic song for you. <laughs> and then at the end of the song, right. he goes, and by the way, right. you're all fired. <laughs> yeah. You're not wanted. <laughs> and you're not wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and you're to blame. <laughs> All right. Uh, so update on that Fonzie jacket and the Triumph that was at auction at Bonham's. 70s, Triumph, the yeah. motorcycle brand. Oh. Yeah. Just to make sure everyone didn't think yes. it was a Triumph. The, that, the insult dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it was a Triumph yeah. and this broke the record oh, in sales. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, Henry Winkler auctioned off a number of props and costumes he wore as the Fonz in Happy Days. And when I first reported the story, the outfit, so that had the leather, one of the leather jackets and, you know, jeans and t-shirt and boots. It was supposed to go between fifty and eighty thousand. Any guesses on what it sold for? I looked it up, so I'm, okay, I'm you're gonna recused. pull myself out. I feel like everything is exceeding the estimate these days, just prices mm-hmm. and inflation and the economy. So I'm gonna go 110,000. Okay, Dan. 111,000. Oh, you son of a bitch. This one stayed within, but on the high side, 753. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Now the silver 1949 Triumph Trophy 500 motorcycle. Oh, I thought they were together. Okay, sorry. Separate. Uh, that was expected to sell between eighty thousand and one hundred twenty thousand. Any guesses? I did not look that one up. It's not a Bonneville, which is the is more sort of popular one. Is this the bike the that's the Fonz Road? In yeah, the Happy Days, or okay. it had next to him at least. So that thing has some street value anyway, right? Because the Collectible motorcycles are getting really expensive, Fonzie Fonzie or not. So whereas the leather jacket has no street value or the street value. So I don't know what the street. I I don't remember if we went with the uh, with the estimate on that one or not. Well, it was expected to go between eighty and hundred and twenty. Oh. That's interesting. One forty. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll go well one thirty. I'm gonna double down on my theory. I wasn't gonna go one thirty, but change up one thirty five. $230,000. Oh, there it is. Wow. There's not much to that bike, and it probably, it's, it's, street value of that's probably under 20. So that's probably a lot of, a lot of Fonzie, I think. Nice. Al, I know that you're very fond of flatulence and gases and belches and farts. Oh, but also the jacket. Thank you. Full stop. The jacket, there's like seven of those. There are, and the, one of them's in the Smithsonian. You're not getting they that one. They have like the hero uh, one and the whatever. You yeah. don't know which jacket you're have yeah. one for get, reshoots. getting. Right. Uh, your body double. Body double jacket. Uh, the bike is probably one of one. Yeah. So that, right. that gives it a bump. Sorry, go ahead. Well, an Australian man has set a new record for the loudest burp on earth. And yes, I'm going to play it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neville Sharp broke the record set 12 years ago by a guy in the UK. So on July 29th, Neville's burp was registered at 112.4 decibels. Is he the sound studio? <laughs> That's where they put him to do the record. That's great. So this is how they're really taking this seriously. By the way, 112 decibels louder than a trombone, an electric drill, a vacuum, a lawnmower. In the video, which I'm going to show you, posted on Twitter by Guinness, 
According to this, Sharp can be seen in a recording studio burping near a woman who's holding this decibel meter. Uh, His first attempt is 110 decibels. Then he broke that. So let's watch both burps. Oh, that's a loud burp. That's good. It's like a dinosaur. But he thinks he's got a better one in him. That one broke the record. Now he's going to break his own record. Here he takes a shot of Jim Beam cream. (laughs) Here he goes now. He's a bubble. (gasps) Audible gasp. 112? 112.4. He's so getting laid. (laughs) Doubtful. (laughs) um, Yeah, Chris, you can leave stuff on the screen if you put it up. Thanks. Uh, is one of three Fonzie bikes built for the oh. show. So that well, was corrected. The, yeah, run, and it was right. built by uh, Steve McQueen's stunt double. He's oh, the guy shit. who jumped the bike in the great escape over the fence okay. uh, famously. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, of course. Um, the, uh, which may have been a Bonneville triumph, I think. Um, I think the rub was the bike was made, you know, eight years after the Nazis mm. were gone or something. <laughs> but, sure. you know. It's a cool buy-in. shot. But, um, so... There is a guy. You guys know the guy in New Orleans who's the whistle guy? Mm-mm. I don't think so. Brian, you've probably seen this guy. He's a okay. black fella. He's got the whistle head. Oh, He's a, oh, a ref's whistle. You're talking about football. I thought you were talking about a guy making like noise. A, yeah, like well, a he makes French noise. quarter. He's a noisemaker. Yes, yeah, so you're talking about the Saints fan who wears a ref's whistle. Yes, because head. I think... You oh, said the whistle guy. <laughs> well, he's a whistle <laughs> guy. <laughs> from, and he's he's yeah, from yeah, the New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. And he's got... Uh, he just wears a whistle. Looks like a whistle, like a football, any kind of PE whistle. Wow. What if you and, sit behind uh, that guy? That's a that's, and, that and what he does is I think he has the record for world's loudest whistle. That works? That's functional? With his finger. No oh. And not no not blowing into his head. <laughs> No, <laughs> not the cardboard whistle. Well, the, that's, put the yeah, no, in I, the get, mouth. I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Thank you. You know those carpet know. stores that have the giant genie out front holding a roll of carpet? Yes. <laughs> those aren't real genies. What? You don't get free carpet? <laughs> and you know the tire places that have the giant. You know the giant donut that's on top of Yes. Not I donut. Not real. Don't try to Damn eat it, Gina. Not? not a real donut. Come on. That's why you never see any seagulls on it. <laughs> so um, he whistles. And he whistles at like 157 decibels. Jesus. Wow. And when we went out to do the man show bit, we went out to Mardi Gras or whatever, that guy literally stands next to you. Like when you're in the crowd doing things. And he, his whole thing is. I don't remember that at all. He's the whistle guy. Oh, no shit. Except for it's the, the most man. fucking annoying thing on the Piercing. planet because he's standing next to you and he's just breaking eardrums. Like, ee, ee. But, you know, it's sort of like that's his thing. He's yeah. He's got to do. Right. His thing, oh. but if you're anywhere near him, it's deafening. My grandma says you're on the Bourbon Street. The Bourbon the Street. Bourbon. That's what, right. What about That's people right. that paint their faces and go to games? That fascinates me. I'm like, what? What? Why would you do that? Mm-hmm. Like when they got the paint smeared all like the red paint. They're Denver fans, and you're like, it's also, so uncomfortable. What's that? What does that guy's pillow case look like? <laughs> exactly. That's a shit show. Like Pennywise right? from It. That's right. Yeah. Or they put masks. So people that wear masks, I'm like, what? You can't see the game. Like, no. you gotta, mm-hmm. we gotta doing this for this is What's shot. going on? Mm-hmm. Why does it have to be about you? Why can't it be about what's happening on the field? Mm. Sorry. Do we point. have, that guy set a record. I want to hear What that. is his record? I'm pretty sure he's a whistle guy. Most days not getting laid. <laughs> <What's his finger? laughs> I'm but, the whistle guy. All right. <laughs> he's the See only ya. black man that gets more cabs than Whitey because he can hail. <laughs> Nobody hails. And like the cab driver's like, he's black. Yeah. I'm going, you hear the you hear whistle? That? You hear the hail? Siren song. It's good. No problem getting a cab with that dude. Color, we, color skin aside. Do we have it or should we give yeah, us well, more time? I, uh, he does. Ha- he like, some people say he could whistle louder than a plane. They call him the whistle monster. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, yeah, I'm still looking at at any official. Okay. Well, let's stay on the football tip for a second. Brian, this is for you. Let's hear it. Uh, Oklahoma fans still very upset about Lincoln Riley leaving for for USC. And a state senator says he's come up with a perfect tribute to the coach that they're all kind of pissed at. Mm. Uh, Bill Coleman proposed a bill that would rename three inches of westbound of the westbound lane of State Highway 325 in the Panhandle as Lincoln Riley Highway. Coleman said in a release, "I found the tiniest section of our." 
our most desolate highway to pay tribute to Coach Riley's exit uh, from Oklahoma. This is only fitting as this is the last three inches one sees before leaving the great state of Oklahoma. And they are voting on this in February. God. Whistle Monster set a record in 2002 on Jimmy Kimmel's show. Oh, really? shit. 123 decibels. So he, he beat the belcher. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Do we have uh, footage of that, uh, Max Pata? No. All right. Well, yeah, no, we, have, we, don't. we have the info, though. All right. All right. So there he, there he was. Most annoying man alive. <laughs> Can I do one, 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 more. one more in the name of Dan Dunn? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Uh, this is probably going to make you feel horrible feelings inside. Um, a wine company has teamed up with Nabisco to make an official wine to pair with Oreos. Uh, it's called Barefoot X Oreo Thins, sold out on the website. Um, on Twitter, this is what Barefoot writes. Uh, it's a red blend. It'll send your taste buds into fits of rich chocolatey delight. Enjoy a scrumptious medley of blackberry and dark cherry aromas as they transition into delicate flavors of chocolate cookies and cream. Now, I looked for reviews of people trying this wine, and I found one from Market Watch. They tried it. They described the flavor as unnatural, unseemly, and unappetizing. They say it tastes like the liquid version of those cheap chocolate-covered cherries you buy after Valentine's Day to get a, d a discount. I don't know if, you're, if you've are if you tried this or if I you're would I have not tried it, but I would love to get some just to go to like a fancy dinner party and bring that. Mm. Yeah. I just watch everybody's face and be like, right. hey, here you go. But they're going to be very emperor's new clothes with you because you're an expert. So they're yeah. going to pretend like they like it. And just act like it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God, I'm picking up notes of, uh, of Cookie. Uh, Oreo. <laughs> like who, <laughs> I had some, the only thing I had wine was screwed was somebody put some, they infused it with weed. Mm -hmm. well, and wine you. is just the one thing you really can't mess with. Wine should yeah. stay wine. For, for unless centuries, you put, well, Unless you put half a bottle of vodka in it and call it mangria. Mm -hmm. Then, I, then I never, good. Yeah. I agree. I never got Oreos. I just, I just felt like there's so many cookies I like so much better. Everything that Petrich Farms uh, mm -hmm. has, anything you could find at a Jewish Sausalitos. bakery. Like I, there's so many cookies I like better. I like I like peanut butter cookies. Mm -hmm. I like oatmeal cookies. I like Toll House chocolate chip. They're, I like everything better than, than an Oreo. I, isn't the worst well, cookie? I, fig, sorry, fig, fig Newton. Maybe the Nilla wafer or something, yeah. something like that. That has Why? to go on a banana pudding. How do they get as big? And by the way, you lost me on any food where they're telling you how to eat it. the instructions. You yeah. know, you can, you can turn it counterclockwise, yeah. pull it apart, and then take Dunk your it. front teeth and pull it out, yep. pull the frosting out. Like, what, what is so good about it? Is it for dumb people? I don't like it when it's added for to a, children. a blizzard yeah. or something. Yeah. That I, it's, it's, we, oh. we have flavors. I think They're the dumb. one application works is when it's added to like ice cream or like cookies and cream. the aforementioned blizzard. That's the one time where you're like, yeah, now give me the, you know, but the Oreo. Still not as good as just a chocolate shake, well, yeah. in my, uh, my opinion. Otherwise, it's just kind of a well, flat-tasting chocolate cookie with vegetable shortening. Yeah, because right. as cookie-infused things go, would right. you rather have like, the cookie dough ice cream? No. I, my my thing really? is, I well, okay, so here's the thing. You go to the Froyo place now, and the toppings mm -hmm. that they offer are like gummy worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids and baseball training yep. cards yep. and shit and gum yes. and stuff. It's like, no, no, oh, I want fucking it. nuts and caramel Sprinkles. and fudge yeah. and whipped cream. Like, There's what? another meal on top of my meal. Well, it's also well, it's even... it's a synthesized yeah. plastic weird Sour Patch yeah. meal. I, I want the fucking toppings. Yeah. Lemon same. heads. Yeah. Yes, and I, I feel the same way about all the blizzards and all the everything and all the, uh, the, the weird, like, you know, they'll, they'll take a thing and they'll go like cookie doughs that way or um, all the Ben and Jerry's varieties are all infused with something. No, I appreciate what you're, what uh, you're doing here, Brian. But what I'm saying is, is chunky monkey, mm -hmm. you know, like the peanut butter mm -hmm. one with the chocolate or the cherry Garcia. Mm -hmm. that, that's all fine. That's mm -hmm. a cherry. That's chunky or whatever. Birthday cake mm -hmm. uh -huh. is weird to me. It just it, it, it ends up just it translates of just sweetness. It's just mm -hmm. a bunch of sweet. You know what yeah. I mean? Sprinkles and birth. That's why I don't like the jimmies or the sprinkles. I love a flavor. I love a pralines and cream. I, I love the anything peanut butter, anything coffee, butterscotch like drizzle. butterscotch, like any of that stuff. It's the weird synthesized yeah. non flavors yeah. that get pushed into just the flavor is sweet. That's that's what, right. what it's at. It doesn't really have its own flavor. It's just more sweetness on top of sweet. And the texture doesn't do anything for you. And so like Oreos are kind of in that. For me. Yeah. 
I would I, much rather I, have the I have a, salty caramel. I have an interesting relationship with cookies, and I'll tell you why. And this could be the Jim Beam cream talking here. But when I was a child, young, in Philadelphia, there was a street called the Roosevelt Boulevard. Okay? And on Roosevelt Boulevard, very, Roosevelt. very close to proximity to each other, there was a uh, drive-in movie theater that at night would play porno movies oh, at wow. the drive-in theater. The so when you would drive by, you there was a fence, but you could still catch <laughs> You could catch about a third of the screen, right? So this was the biggest rule because my grandmother lived up that way. So when we would come home from my grandmother's house at night, you you get my face pressed up to the <laughs> roof of the car so I could catch a couple seconds of whatever was happening in the porn. And then right past the porn, right past the movie theater, was a giant Nabisco factory. So you, I would see the porn, and then almost immediately thereafter, I would catch a whiff of everything they were yeah, making because they yeah. ramp it up at night at Nabisco. Sure. Yeah. And you're just getting the cookies and all this. And it they sort of fuse together in my mind. So I... <laughs> Cookies, Christmas, let's just say Christmas gets interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm just sure. When they start making cookies, mm. Dan gets, I get a little, ch I get a little chub. I get Ritz a little chub crackers make Dan yeah. hard. That's why. I, I'm not joking. I, I associate sex with the smell yeah. of cookies. Makes sense. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Thanks, Mom. This is heartfelt. Me. But uh, <laughs> from a young Dan Don, face pressed against the window, looking at the uh, top half of the 70s porn actresses yeah. to VR goggles <laughs> and Jim Beam cream in the left hand. <laughs> You've come a long way, my friend. Yeah. And I, I wanted to point that out to you. Yeah. And it's heartfelt. I hope you accept it <laughs> Thank you. in the spirit in which it's intended. Everybody's proud. All right. <laughs> Let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Playing, they call him the whistle monster. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news. We have uh, footage Grad. of the yeah. whistle monster. And, and a lot of people might remember uh, during the 2019 NFC Championships, the Saints, the Saints versus the Rams. Everybody's hearing this guy in in the background too. So there are a lot of complaints going into like the network, like why? Because he was they're blowing think, the whistle. The mics were getting picked up. Right. They're blow, right. Like they think they're blowing the whistle. Sure. The, the yeah. play. It was just an annoying. It's not like a bird in the audience that was just like annoying everybody because he's it's so piercing. Yeah, but I'm saying they thought it was a whistle, the ref's whistle, right? I just thought it was, everyone was just annoyed by the sound. Like people were just watching the game. Well, you will. That. There are games where you hear someone a whistle uh, yeah. in the crowd. And it seems like the yeah, action is stopped. Start. Yeah. No fingers, by the way. No, no I fingers. thought he did fingers. Oh, holy shit! Oh boy. We have one where he does do fingers too. If you want. Oh, to he does that fingers one. as oh, well. Style. Oh. Yeah. Talented. Very versatile. <laughs> it's the most, again, it's the most obnoxious thing. If you were next to him at a, at a Saints game, you would kill yourself before yeah. the second quarter. I'd like okay. to get some new season tickets. <laughs> just, to, just to put that in a little bit of perspective, you guys are all, or your faders are all at unity at zero dB. Mm-hmm. I played that at minus 35 oh, shit. decibels, which is next to minus 40 is kind of non-audible. <laughs> mm -hmm. So minus 35 wow. is just a little bit higher than non-audible. That was loud. And if I can put my Adam Carolla hat on again, I think he might do okay with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has some skills. All right. you uh, Did we bring it home, Gina? We did. All right. Let me tell you about uh, Scribd. With so much content out there, you might spend as much time looking for your next book as reading it. Scribd, instant access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more, plus thoughtfully curated editor's picks and smart recommendations based on what you've read, all for just $9.99 a month. By the way, uh, I got all my books there on Scribd, and uh, so many other great offerings as well. Uh, streaming changed everything. We used to uh, flip through the channels, looking for everything all the time. Now we just pick from thousands of great options. Scribd does that for books. Wired and Forbes called it Netflix for books. And again, <clears throat> for those of you who are uh, busy but you want to learn, I want to go with Scribd. Am I right, Dawson? Right now, Scribd is offering our listeners a free 60-day trial. Go to try.scribd.com slash Adam for your free trial. That's try.scribd.com slash Adam to get 60 days of Scribd for free. 
All right, Dan Dunn, what we're drinking with Dan Dunn, and uh, and actually a new uh, podcast as well, Revenge Fantasies, co-hosted with comedian Justin Silver, premieres today, as you hear this, and wherever you get finer podcasts, and uh, shoot them an Instagram, or check them out on Instagram, at The Imbiber. Dan, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for man. having me. <laughs> you can go to AdamCroll.com. Uh, Brea tickets. Uh, I think the second show sold out, Max Pata, but you should check that. But uh, TJ Miller, the early show on uh, coming up this Wednesday is not. That'll be uh, December 15th, coming up this Wednesday. We're taping those shows. Helium Comedy Club are all going to be there December 22nd, 23rd, doing four shows stand-up and live pod and you can uh, check out uh, our chassis channel 687 as well see all the premium stuff there until next time adam Kroll for dan dunn and gina grad and bull brian say it mahalo you know black folk you got uh, you got the vertical you got the wide hog and then you got a little bit tardy mm. focus on tamping down the bad mm. that's all just like you would individually that's a good you know point. I mean? Lean into the good stuff, tamp down the bad. Don't throw them all out. Right. All right. Is that why Jews have gotten less funny? Mmm. They didn't want to be that. known for it. <laughs> <laughs>